Okay, hello, good evening. Today, our second uh, discussion and discussion about Fawzia sheet uh, illustrated with diagrams and uh, comments. Uh, very important for your exam in MRCS part A and many, many questions are repeated every exam. I hope my voice is clear. Yes? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Picture is clear and screen is clear. Everything clear, Dr. Rani. We'll okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zakir. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, start, uh, Dr. Matasim, and please, uh, after Dr. Matasim, uh, another one can just see, be ready to start. Uh, Dr. Matasim, you can read up to 10 questions, no problem. Okay, you can start, Dr. Matasim. Okay. Uh, as 26 years old man, motorcyclist loses one liter of blood secondary to an open fracture of the femur. Uh, sustained in road traffic accident. Which of the following is most likely earliest compensatory response in hypovolemia in this patient? Pyroreceptors induced vasoconstriction, capillary fluid shift, decreased atrial natriuretic peptide, renal fluid retention, renal angiotensin system activation. Uh, patient uh, loses one liter of blood. Uh, the earliest compensatory response in hypovolemia will be uh, renin angiotensin. Renin angiotensin, this is uh, decrease the blood flow through the, the renal artery. So this is by the yoxtaglomeri apparatus to this guy. But this is not the first. Paroreceptors first. induce the vasoconstriction. Exactly, paroreceptors is more early. It's more early in this. Okay. Uh, and this uh, problem. By the way, as, as can we remember from the, uh, remember from our study in EMRCS, you can remember the, the kidney autoregulator uh, blood pressure. The kidney can maintain a normal glomerular filtration rate, okay, and can keep uh, by uh, autoregulation the blood uh, the blood flow is it in uh, through it. If we can remember, we can remember this number. I think the kidney can auto regulate from 160 to 80 systolic blood pressure. There is auto auto regulation. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's why the kidney is not the first organ that will respond to the uh, respond to the uh, change in the blood pressure of the patient during after trauma okay okay yeah. okay next question uh, histology uh, histology of a discrete palpable lump in the breast of a 34 year old woman has shown uh, apocrine metaplasia epithelial overgrowth and papillary projections uh, what is the most likely pathological process benign breast cyst carcinoma of the breast fibroadenoma phylloid tumor plasma mastitis um, 34 year old woman uh, with apocrine metaplasia and the papillary projection. Um, I think it will be. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Anyone know can answer? Benign breast. Benign breast. Benign breast. 
Okay. 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 This is a young woman. So as I told you, in in, in MRCS, when he wants want you to, to, to diagnose a cancer, he will go for the most common. The most common breast cancer, it's about 50, 60, something like this. So can make the um, uh, uh, thinking and the question and the choices for you is easy. But here he told you a young woman, okay, and has shown apocrine metaplasia. Apocrine means the secretory cells, secretory cells. Secretory cells means I, I'm thinking about the secretions one, one uh, cystic or 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 the uh, one of the cysts that uh, 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 secrete muscle milk in the breast or something like that. Overgrowth of capillary projections or not? It's almost like a day. Carcinoma of the breast? No. Carcinoma. It will be difficult. Okay. Fibroadenoma. It comes not coming from the can come from the fibrous tissue. Uh, in the in the matrix of the breast, not in the in the secretory portion of the tissue. Phylloid tumor the same. It's coming from the matrix. Plasma cell mastite. It is not an inflammation. This is an inflammation, but this is an overgrowth. Of, so the most common or the most near answer will be benign breast cancer. Breast benign breast cyst. Okay. Okay. Benign breast. Okay. Next. And thirty-five year old woman presents with recurrent peptic ulceration. She is on proton pump inhibitor previously received the helicobacter pylori eradication therapy three months ago. Which of the following is likely to be raised on venous blood testing? Uh cholecyst gastrin, histamine, pancreasine, secretin. Patient has recurrent peptic ulceration, so patient has Zoling, may have zollinger ellison and uh, or gastrinoma, so gastrin is elevated in venous blood. Gastrin is elevated in the blood. So, as we said, recurrent peptic ulceration in a young age, you have to think about gastrin. Okay, or uh, and uh, he will tell you in spite of uh, he received medication, long time proton pump, and so on. The only thing he wants to know or to ask about here in according to your schedule is the Zollinger Williamson syndrome. And another question we can remind, remember from yesterday, he wants to know what increased the gastric, uh, what was? What? Yesterday. What, what made gastric increase? Uh, yesterday. Tell me. What is the, the hormone makes the calcium uh, gastrin increase? That's why we said sometimes we found some nervous person, hyperactive person, or or patient with a, a, a nervous problem or or, or a hyperactivity of adrenaline. Yes. When he asked it about what what can uh, what can make sometimes gastrin, what is the uh, yani, Hormones can activate or increase uh, the amount of gastrin or increase the release of gastrin in the body called adrenaline. Okay. Okay. Next question. Um, three year old male boy presented with his mother for rectal blood loss. His mother describes it as a bright red blood in the toilet pan. He has no pain on defecation. Uh, with negative family history, what is the most likely cause? Adenomatous polyp, juvenile polyp, metastatic polyp, multiple polyposis coli, with Jeda syndrome. As a patient is three years old uh, and uh, bright rectal painless, painless uh, bleeding, um, it will not be adenomatous, it will be juvenile polyp. Exactly, three years old, rectal blood loss. His mother describes a bright red blood comes in his toilet, no pain identification with negative family history, and 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 he didn't uh, describe anything about uh, pet sugar syndrome or or I think this repeated question. Repeated from my patient. Yes, sir. From the juvenile part. Okay. Next question. 
as uh, 32 year old man presents with painful torticollis there is no past medical history and uh, and his only complaint is that he has been feeling rather tired over the last four nights on examination he has large rubbery mass in the lateral aspect of his neck as well as a few smaller masses along his internal jugular vein you correctly assume that the muscular neck spasm and the large mass are connected. The most likely cause of this torticollis is due to pressure on uh, ansa cervicalis, cervical plexus branch, cranial accessory nerve, spinal accessory nerve, vagus nerve. Spinal accessory nerve. Okay, painful. Torticollis, past medical history, and his only complaint has been being another tired over the four nights on examination. Large rubbery mass on the lateral aspect of his neck, smaller masses along the internal and jugular vein. Correctly assume muscular neck spasm. Mm -hmm. Most likely cause of the stochus is spinal accessory. Okay, what the spinal accessory uh, give in the neck or give muscles? Uh, uh, trabezius and the sternocleidomastoid. Trabezius and sternocleidomastoid. Okay, that's why when we test this nerve, we ask the patient to shrug his shoulder, shrug his shoulder so he can use or turn the neck against the resistance to the other side. This is a very common uh, in uh, 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 station in part B, cranial nerve examination. And this is the examination of, uh, and this is the examination of uh, 11 cranial nerve. Next question. A thin menopausal 52 year uh, old woman is diagnosed with breast cancer. Her menar was at the age of 14. She had her first child at age of 40 years. During lactation, she developed a breast abscess that necessitated surgical intervention. She has no family history of breast cancer. Which of the following is the most significant risk factor for this patient? Age at first full term. Uh, pregnancy, familial predisposition, history of breast abscess, um, interval between uh, in menarch and menopause, physical suture. Uh, the patient uh, patient had uh, early menarch at age of 14. She had her first time 40 during lactation. I think interval, interval between menarch and menopause. Okay, can you read this table, please? Okay, age, uh, risk factor, uh, age uh, above 10. Uh, uh, the high risk uh, elder patient above 10. Uh, reproductive risk factors, uh, menarche before 11, menopause after 54, nullibara or first child in early 40 years. Uh, lifestyle factors, like uh, high intake of saturated fat, body mass so index. The most, the, most, the, most, the most common problem. Nullibara. Nullibara. Yeah. The most common yeah. problems here. Age of menarch, age at menopause. Okay, especially if menopause after 54. 54. Age of first pregnancy, nullibara or first child in early 14s. Okay, the answer will be... Uh, age at first uh, pregnancy. He had her first child at 40 years. Okay, okay. Taban, uh, yani we can see family predisposition. Yes, it's okay. History of breast abscess not, not, uh, yani not has a, a high rate of uh, development or we can, it is a risk factor maybe, but it's not, except if it is chronic abscess or some interval between menarche and menopause. Yani it is good, yani early menarche or rate, but it's an interval. Um, yani it is not a risk factor, physical stature. But here, he asks here for this patient. The most significant for this patient, yes. For this patient. What is the most significant for this patient? All of these can be. But here he asks, he wants to know this one. He wants, because first a child, first a child at 40 years. Okay. Okay. So answer is age of the first 
Edge of first bridge. Full tear. Okay. Next question. A 30 year old woman is sent to the outpatient clinic with weight loss of five kilo over the last six months. She also complains of anxiety, panic attacks, and palpitation. On examination, there is a swelling in the anterior neck, which moves on a swallowing, which of the following is most likely pathology underlying this presentation. Graves disease, Hashimoto cyloiditis, metastasis to thyroid, papillary carcinoma, and differentiated carcinoma. This clinical picture is of cyrotoxicosis. Um, cyrotoxicosis, um, maybe, and uh, there is the swelling in the anterior which moves. Uh, I think it is uh, Graves disease. Okay, young age. Patients young age, outpatient with weight loss. Five kilo over the last six months. She also complained of anxiety, panic attacks, palpitation. All this picture of hyperthyroidism on examination there is swelling moves with swallowing which is a follow most like to be pathological okay Hashimoto thyroiditis why not why not Hashimoto um Hashimoto may be a thyroid hypothyroid yeah, yeah. there is a phase Mostly of hyper it, it only 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 the start of Hashimoto and sometimes this this stage you can't see and you uh, it is missed by the patient but mostly Hashimoto will have a low thyroid state Metastatic okay. thyroid, it is not a cancer. It is moving good, uh, uh, was swallowing, and has no problem, and the patient is not cachectic. And also in metastasis, metastasis will be hypothyroid stage. Papillary cancer, the same. Papillary cancer, all, all cancers, all cancer are almost hypoactive. All cancer, or cancer, or tumor masses, all hypoactive, no active. Okay, so the only is Graves, Graves disease. Next question. A 69-year-old man has been admitted to the high dependency unit following an anterior resection under general anesthesia. He was given 2 mg of intrathecal morphine. On examination, he looks pale and drowsy. Arterial blood gases results are uh, pH uh, 7.28, which is acidosis, uh, PCO2 8.1, uh, PO2 10, uh, PCO2 is PCO2 is increased, so it is respiratory acidosis. Is it acidosis as well? So we have here acidosis and we have here acidosis. So continue. Uh, base excess minus uh, two point one. Uh, glucose uh, 20, 21 millimole. Lactate four millimole per liter, which is increased. Okay. Uh, which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Diabetic ketoacidosis, metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis. What will you search in the question? I'm searching for acidosis, respiratory. Okay. So? Respiratory acidosis. Exactly. You are going here for respiratory. Metabolic wrong, metabolic wrong, don't continue. Respiratory, we have two respiratory acidosis and, and close. In this case, is respiratory acidosis. Simply. Uh, uh, but Simply I'm asking about why lactate hmm. is increased. Um, lactate in the post operative. Post operative, you have tissue damage. Okay. okay. You, you expect to have lactate increase. And the patient in post operative is stressed. You expect uh, the patient is hyperglycemic. Okay. 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 Some, th some things in the scenario are confusing, but just here. If diabetic ketoacidosis, it will equal metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis. Both of them the same. Yeah. Diabetic mm -hmm. acidosis is a type of metabolic acidosis. It's a type of metabolic acidosis. Yes, A and B Best. is the same answer. Yeah. Is the, the same answer, but here is no metabolic acidosis, and he didn't even mention the PCHCO3. The HCO3, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, next question. Um, a 32 year old woman has a pigmented lesion excised from her left cup. 
the histopathological diagnosis is melanoma in situ, which is completely excised with a one centimeter margin. What is the next most appropriate management? Uh, education about skin self-examination and discharge from uh, follow-up, elective inguinal lymph node dissection, re-resection with two centimeter margin, removal of any other pigmented lesion, sentinel lymph node biopsy. Um, 32 year old woman, uh, excise from the top of the historical with one centimeter margin. You have to take a sentinel lymph node, node for sentinel lymph node. Uh, melanoma, melanoma in situ. Do you need to have a sentinel lymph node no, for melanoma in situ? Melanoma in situ, uh, no, 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 no lymph node. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, there is no breach of the basement membrane. No breach of basement membrane, okay. Okay, so, removal of any pigmented, no, no, as a pigmented uh, lesion, no, no, no. You will make re excision again. No, uh, uh, re-excision depends on the the uh, the depth. Say, uh, melanoma in situ, completely excised with us. Completely excised, so no re-excision. Elective inguinal lymph node. No, because the patient. Uh, the same like this. The same like this is both the same answer. Okay. Center lymph nodes can be the inguinal lymph node, but here. Just for by exclusion, by the exclusion it is in. Yeah, this is by exclusion, exactly. By exclusion, you will just train the patient or just education of the patient just to take care because some patients who have this malignant melanoma can have it in another in other side of their body. But you will not take all the body any pigmented lesion to remove. Okay. Okay. Next question. A uh, 60-year-old man with a past history of angina undergoes an, an, an uncomplicated operation for an inguinal hernia. Postoperatively, he is found to be hypotensive, tachycardic, and has a raised jugular venous pressure. What is the most likely underlying cause of his hypotension? Reduced afterload, uh, reduced the parasympathetic tone, reduced the preload, reduced the stroke volume, reduced the sympathetic tone. Uh, because the patient has a history of angina and has increased jugular venous pressure, so the patient uh, may have a cardio and hypotensive. The patient has a cardiogenic shock. Uh, I think the uh, answer is D, reduce the stroke volume. Exactly. Similar scenario was yesterday when you when he asks you or tell you that the patient has a cardiac problem and post-operative start the patient to have hypotension, uh, tachycardia or bradycardia or low blood pressure and so on. The first thing will come in your mind that the patient may have prone to cardiogenic shock. In cardiogenic shock, the patient will have a reduced stroke volume from the heart. The heart pump will not get enough blood for pumping, so it will be a uh, uh, cardiogenic shock reducing the stroke volume. Okay, thank you, Dr. Moatassim. Who's ready to go after Dr. Moatassim? I'm ready. Dr. Ahmed Aiz, uh, Background is uh, noise. Uh, I did it, okay. Okay, okay. Um, a four-year-old boy presents to the emergency department with a two-day history of fever difficulty walking and is unable to wait pair on the right leg. He has been on oral amoxicillin in 150 milligrams three times a day for a chest infection over the last five days. He's irritable with the temperature of 79.4. He does not allow examination and keeps his right hip flexed and adducted. Blood tests are uh, WBC um, 18.3, CRB 146, hemoglobin is 11.3, what is the most likely diagnosis? This uh, picture of uh, post-inflammatory septic arthritis. D. Perfect. All other options are not uh, have including any inflammations. 
only like uh, uh, the patient with hip versus disease, step upper uh, femoral epiphysis. So only one is septic arthritis. Okay, as you, you said do... here, this patient, mm -hmm. this patient, uh, you have many scenarios about a patient, young age coming to the clinic is limping. The patient, only one patient will come with fever and a history of recent infection, uh, I mean, of fever and recent infection and taking the patient has high grade fever, the patient has white blood cell, high white blood cell, and the patient has white CRP. So this is an infection, a bacterial infection. The only of these are bacterial infection is the septic arthritis. Septic arthritis. The patient of Persis disease, he will tell you a patient six year, about six years and coming to the clinic with limping uh, and no other uh, manifestation of uh, sepsis or infection or history of recent infection and 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 so on. And sometimes he tell you uh, in uh, uh, in X-rays there is some fibrosis or or some uh, 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 decrease in the size of the head of the femur. This is Persis disease. Slipped upper femur epiphysis. This is a patient about 13, 14, 15, overweight patient or obese patient. As you see, child obese limping, go direct for the question to ask to search for slipped upper femoral epiphysis. Slipped upper femoral epiphysis. Okay. Okay. Next question. Uh, the slip, the slip epiphysis only happened in the uh, upper femur, head of femur. Uh, according to our uh, schedule, he only mm. asks for the upper femur because the body weight only slipped upper mm. femur epiphysis. Slip epiphysis can happen in any joint, yeah, for any trauma for anything. But here, what we ask uh, will be asked during the exam. The upper femur epiphysis only could be asked. Fair enough. <laughs> yes. yeah. Don't worry. No other yes. uh, epiphyseal problems will, will have to accept for um, uh, Salter classification. And this some in some and some orthopedic question we will we will face yeah, during our revision. Yes. Okay. Okay. Next question. A 74 year old man is admitted to the emergency department with a head injury on examination. His Glasgow coma scale is nine. A CT scan of the brain administrates an extra dural hemorrhage. Which of the following arteries is the most likely source of this? It's always been the middle meningeal artery. Exactly. Middle meningeal artery at the trigon, at the uh, terion, is the most common source of. Extra dural hemorrhage, special in head trauma. Yeah. Next it's question. A, it's, a branch, it's a branch of maxillary? Branch of maxillary artery, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, uh, a 65-year-old man has a history of <clears throat> ischemic attacks. He's due to undergo carotid and arterectomy. Which one of the following is true of the internal carotid artery? Internal carotid artery, okay. Uh, begins the delivery of six trabecus divides on the anterior a middle posterior. I, I have to read all the, the options. Well, uh, I can't pick. Uh, uh, yeah, I tell and say yes or no. It, it begins at the level of six of the cervical vertebra. No, at which level? Uh, C3. Mm. So, yani, no, no. Uh, not exactly. No, 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 uh, I missed uh, oh. start at the um, in, uh, in sternum, uh, uh, C4 bifurcation C of carotid at C4. C4 bifurcation of carotid at C4. C4, yes, sir. And, and bifurcation of carotid at C4. Okay, carotid, carotid bifurcation at C4. Oh. Okay. Tracheal bifurcation at T4. T4. T4 5. T4 5. Remember it. Bifurcation of aorta. L4. L4. Don't miss this. 
for information of film uh, cafe l5 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 but just i want you to remember ah, four okay not all of them four okay trachea t4 five and our t4 but by for uh, formation of the uh, uh, ivc is l5 l5 trachea okay. l5 uh, one is a tall uh, tall person Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep T45. You'll find okay. it in some box T45. And the, okay, so this is the first one. Divides on the anterior, middle, and posterior cerebral arteries? No. No. Okay. Next one. Gives off the ophthalmic gives, gives artery. Ophthalmic artery, yes. Yes. Yes, okay. It is accompanied no. in the skull no. by free and no. sympathetic nerves. No, no. No. Okay. No. Passes, Passes through, through the, the foramen ever. Which no, foramen? Ah. But is the carotid the carotid for me? Carotid. Uh, okay. Okay. Twenty-five uh, year old uh, male athlete is training at rest. Uh, how many liters of blood per minute does his heart pump out? It's the same five to six. No C. One minute, please. Okay. So twenty-five old men athlete training uh. at rest. How many liters? Oh, the same, the same, the same in acid and acid and acid person. You have five to six, and this is, by the way, uh, even in September 2020, this question is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A 26 year old man presented to the emergency department after sustaining a glass cut to his arm. On examination, there is a 10 centimeter longitudinal laceration on the anterior aspect of his upper arm. Uh, okay, he has symptoms of this type of ulnar nerve injury. On exploring the upper part of the arm, uh, we would expect the ulnar nerve to be anterior than medial to the brachial artery. No, it is not, uh, it's not median nerve. Medial then anterior to the brachial artery. No, also not brachial nerve, uh, median nerve, medial to the brachial artery. Uh, in the upper arm, yes, yes, C, posterior, the middle, C, posterior, middle to the brachial artery in the upper arm. Ulnar nerve, exactly, hmm. oh, exactly. The ulnar nerve, as you see here, the ulnar nerve is medial to the brachial artery, okay. Anterior than medial to the brachial artery, this is the median nerve. When the crossing. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, medial then anterior. Nothing. Posterior then medial. Okay. So medial to the big. This question you have. If you go through these answers, you get confused. Put in your mind. The radial artery is bilateral. The median. Lateral anterior medial. Then ulnar will be medial. Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah, next question. A 55-year-old man presented with acute at, uh, back, back pain following a severe road traffic accident. Neurological examination reveals the lack of sensation of the umbilicus. Umbilicus, a lot of T10. And below, what is the spinal level of the neurological deficit likely to be? T10, C. Okay. One of the most uh, asking a lot in these exams also. Very important, ask about T10. The inguinal area L1 sometimes, sometimes T12, and the nipple is. Don't forget this. Uh, the nipple. Level of the nipple, very important. Many four. times in the exam. T4. T4 also. T4. Nipple is T4. Nipple is T4. Yes. Okay. Nipple okay. is T4. Of course, and the how uh, transverse pain also the one of the most ill one. But this is the dermatomes. This is the dermatomes that very important. Nipple T four, umbilicus T ten, inguinal area L one, sometimes T twelve. Yes. And sometimes they tell you a patient undergoing a 
hernia repair in guanal hernia repair under local anesthesia which level l1 if you didn't L1. find l if you didn't find l1 you will find t12 okay but you will not put both of them at the same time okay next question a 65 year old man complains of being thirsty and getting up in the middle of the night to get to the toilet his weight is 95.5 kilogram height is 1.65 uh, meter in and uh, and the and the blood pressure 167 over 94 millimeter mercury an oral glucose tolerance test was performed and produced the following results the uh, uh, two hours plasma glucose 11.3 this diabetes mellitus okay. above 10 any oh. any one of these any one of these let's go for this diabetes mellitus diabetes if the patient fasting, you find this or and keep this and or if the patient after two hours, more than 11.1, that is. Okay, another question you have, impaired glucose tolerance. Impaired glucose tolerance. There is some, some so what, what's called impaired fasting? No, this is the other question will come. You find the patient normally like this. The patient will have uh, 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 impaired glucose tolerance at fasting. Fasting, you'll find it impaired. Okay, you'll find it less, but less than seven. Less than seven. It is more than the normal, more than five, but less than seven. Okay, but if you did for the patient, the after two hours, you will find it within the this range. This it will not exceed 11.1. If exceed 11.1, if exceed 11.1, it will be diabetic. If didn't mm -hmm. exceed, so this is called impaired glucose tolerance. So we can go from this 11.1. If it is more, more, so this is diabetes mellitus. If it is less, so it is it impaired is. glucose tolerance test impaired glucose tolerance or impaired glucose tolerance okay keep this in your mind the question the question came like this but uh, the the uh, the two hour plasma glucose was um, i think 10 so 11 it, no, it was 11 i think or 10.9 something like that and the answer I, uh, was impaired glucose tolerance yes uh or the bit in this Yeah, ah, no, polyuria is not going to be Okay. This is diabetes mellitus. We'll come, I think. We'll come this mm. question. I don't yes. know in this exam or the next exams. Okay, okay next question. Um, in a nine-year-old child with cellulitis to, uh, of the hand, which chronological sequence of immunoglobulin production is correct? This always uh, confusing for me. IgD proceeds IgE production, IgG proceeds IgA production, IgG proceeds IgE, hmm. IgM proceeds IgM, IgA, IgM. Uh, Serolitis, this means- uh, Any infection, any, uh, any infection, you know, and you hmm. want to check the IgG. immunoglobulins, hmm. IgM will be in the early stages. IgM will be in the early stages and IgG in the late stage. If you just following up the media these days about the uh, COVID-19. COVID-19, yes. COVID okay. Sometimes you ask, if you go, go for to make the immunoglobin, if you find it IgG, so you have a past history of um, subclinical infection and you pass this. If you have IgM, so you are still have an active virus in your body. This is mm. just remember this. Some people go and and try and, and sometimes do the PCR and and others say you can go to do the uh, immunoglobulin. If you find it immunoglobulin G, so you have a previous history and you passed and you passed the acute stage and now you are not active. But this IgG means that you have catched this virus before so, so the, the IgG, it was uh, talking <clears throat> about last few uh, months 
about that can prove that the patient already passed the acute stage or already had previous infection of COVID-19. So the question not uh, specific for the um, the states of no, no. the virus. Ah, okay. IG, okay. IgM IgM is specific for early infection, and mm. then preceded by IgG. IgG. Okay. Next question. A sixty-year-old man presented to the emergency department with epistaxis. The source of the bleeding is identified as Little's area. And is always with direct cautery. Which vessel is most likely responsible for the bleeding? This is a uh, sphenoplatine artery D. Sphenoplatine artery, very common question by the way in the yeah. exam. Yes. Ask us about lipless area or Kesselbach's area, Kesselbach's plexus. The largest one or the commonest one is the sphenoplatine artery. Mm -hmm. Sphenu. Palatine artery is the main artery of bleeding and lipless area or Kesselbach's area. Next question. A uh, 75 year uh, old man presented with esophageal reflux. Endoscopy confirms the presence of hiatus hernia. The esophagus passes through the diaphragm at which level? Esophagus uh, T10. Exactly. This is repeated since yesterday. Yeah. Okay. As we said, vena cava come direct to the heart. So it is come at the at the, at the um, dome of the diaphragm to be direct to the heart. Okay. Uh, the esophagus just go to the stomach through the esophageal hydrotitan, and the aorta is the most posterior structure lying in the groove and the uh, beside the vertebrae, direct on the posterior abdominal wall. So it will be the most posterior structure and the lowest structure. Next question. A 78-year-old woman. Uh, okay, continue. Okay, no problem. Uh, I want someone woman. ready also to uh, take over after Dr. Ahmad Aiz. Who's ready? Okay, continue, Dr. Ahmad. A 78-year-old woman with emphysema receiving 28% uh, by mask has the following has the following uh, blood gas results. A BH 7.28, acidotic, uh, PO2 6.2, hypoxic, carbon dioxide is 8, hypercapnic, bicarb uh, is 36, is elevated uh, for compensation, I think so. So this uh, partially compensated, uh, as the BH is not uh, yet uh, reaches the normal value. So, uh, so this, uh, is, this is a case of respiratory acidosis. Terrorist. Oh, respiratory acidosis because this this in the side of alkalosis, but yeah. this is acidosis and this is acidosis. So it is so partially it will, be, it will be clear to this and this yes. no. This no. Okay, so this is a case of respiratory acidosis, and this is in the alkalotic side, so it will be partially compensated. Compensated. So respiratory which one? C. Okay, partially compensated respiratory. If the BH is seven, if the BH is seven point three thirty-two, uh, thirty-four, it will be 36, fully compensated. At least thirty-five, thirty-five, thirty-six, something like this. It ah. will be fully compensated. Ah. okay. Thank okay, you. Dr. Matasim, thank you. Who else can start? Uh, Dr. Matasim and Dr. Ahmed. Okay, I am ready. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the noise background at the start. No, no, no problem, no problem. You want to take more till someone oh. else is ready? Who's okay, else I am ready. is ready? Can it participate? Okay, please raise hand. Anyone can participate, also can raise hand, okay? Yeah, Dr. Matasim, you can continue till someone starts. Okay. Uh, a 26 year old man is having a, a, stereo, a stereo octactic frame fitted to his skull prior to radio surgery on a cerebroarterial venous malformation. Four pins secure the frame tightly through the scalp to the outer table of the, of the skull. Uh, two anteriorly, two posteriorly. On insertion of one of the posterior pins, arterial hemorrhage is encountered. Which artery is most likely to have been punctured? 
uh, the ascending pharyngeal artery, middle meningeal artery, the occipital artery, the posterior cerebral artery, posterior communicating artery. I think it's the occipital artery. C. Exactly. Occipital artery is common injury in the stereotactic uh, frame, which is just like a circular frame put on the, around the skull and fixed by uh, pins inside the skull. One of the posterior, he's asking here about the posterior and the patient has some bleeding, so it will be the occipital artery. The most common artery will bleed. It's not even the cerebral or middle meningeal or ascending pharyngeal or posterior communicating, all this intracranial. But the occipital artery is what is, which will cause bleeding. Okay, next question. Uh, a two day, uh, 26 year old man presents with a two month history of unilateral testicular swelling. An ultrasound scan shows heterogeneous mass within the testis with surrounding fluid. His blood test shows an elevated alpha fetoprotein level. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Lymphoma, orchitis, seminoma, teratoma, tuberculosis. As the patient has 26 years old and the alpha fetoprotein is elevated, so it is a teratoma. Exactly. Heterogeneous mass, 26. As we said yesterday, 20s, teratoma, 20s, teratoma, 13s, mostly seminoma, and the heterogeneous mass is characteristic for teratoma. Um, heterogeneous also, Dr. mass. Uh, yes. Also, Dr. Rami, uh, elevated alpha fetoprotein uh, means it can't be seminoma. Uh, seminoma never, never has raised alpha fetoprotein. And sometimes not uh, the, any, the, the percentage of elevation of alpha fetoprotein is much more, uh, and I think maybe about 70% with teratoma, and about, I think, as I can remind, about 10% with uh, seminoma. 10%. He has a, 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 some, some, a, a, some percentage, but not, not completely, I think, uh, not. But here, um, more, more. Recent, keep, um, uh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm, Yes, Dr. Dr. Urologist, yes. Mungkin yaftina fi adal mawdu'a. Hello, Dr. Ahmed. I think... I think he's... Maybe muted. Ah, he can mute himself. Okay, may may he's... Okay, uh, yani, yani, but yani, keep, in, keep in mind, an exam is very common. In 20s, he, if 20, 22, 25, 26, he will not, he will give you extremes of age to give, to make it, uh, to make it easy for you. It will be heterogeneous mass without asking about all this. You'll find teratoma. Uh, if a patient 32, 35, up to 40, to seminoma, it will be the most common, above 60 or 70. Lymphoma, lymphoma will be the most common testicular mass. Okay. Next question. Uh, Two-day-old uh, old baby presents with increasing respiratory distress. He was born at term by normal vaginal delivery. On examination, he has cyanosis of the lower limbs and marked respi and marked respiratory in drawing of the of the chest. His femoral pulses are absent bilaterally uh, and has been anoric for the past two hours. Pulse rate is 140 beats per minute, regular, and his blood pressure is 60 over 30 millimeter mercury in both upper limbs. What is the most likely diagnosis? Hypoplastic left heart syndrome, interrupted aortic arch, pulmonary atresia, and ventricular septal defect, transposition of great arteries, tricuspid atresia. Patient has uh, cyanosis of, uh, of post lower limb and the marked respiratory. His femoral pulses are absent bilaterally and has been anoric for past two, two hours. And, uh, I don't know the answer. 
can we interrupt it out take aaj sorry interrupted aortic arch this is a case of uh, sometimes it's like starting from coarctation of the aorta okay or interrupted uh, interrupted aortic arch the interrupted aortic arch we don't need the details we don't need the details but the aortic arch is normally completing like this here is the ductus arteriosus okay sometimes there was interruption here whatever is stenosis or uh, complete interruption like this type a there is complete interruption here complete interruption here complete interruption here all this can cause the different in the vasculature of the lower limb than the upper limb you found the vasculature of the upper limb normal normal pulse and everything but there is no blood coming to the lower or a very uh, a small amount of blood going to the lower limbs and the kidneys because the interruption here and so the renal artery as well so the patient present with anuria because no blood reaching the, the kidneys and also the patient has femoral pulse absent and the patient has cyanosis post lower limb so this is a case of interrupted interrupted aortic arch interrupted aortic arch and that's like as with at least you know transposition of tga no not in, in any uh, uh, it will not be uh, uh, present by a lower limb lower limb only pulmonary atresia no and ventricular septal defect all this the only one that there is no blood coming to the lower limbs and the lower abdomen which is interrupted aortic arch okay can you can read this please uh, interrupted aortic arch is defined as complete separation of ascending and descending aorta uh, criteria uh, cleuria and pattern cleuria and the pattern classification uh, type oh, yeah, a oh, we don't need this type a interruption of the distal distal to the subclavian interruption of between second carotid and ipsilateral uh, subclavian type c interruption between carotids this one this is the most severe one so one side of the head will take carotid the other side we don't need this but just with this the definition is complete separation of ascending and descending aorta. okay next question um, 50 years old women presents with a history of right upper quadrant pain and jaundice. She reports that her urine was dark in color and that her stool are offensive and difficult to flush. Uh, which of the following explains the dark urine? Increased uh, in conjugated pyloropia. Just update this question. Yes, uh, it, it was uh, conj uh, uh, conjugated, uh, increased conjugated pyloropinuria. Yes, as we said yesterday, yesterday conjugated bilirubin, uh, conjugated bilirubin has two ways. If it is present in urine, it will increase dark urine. And at the same time, it's normally in stool. If it is absent from stool, it is absent from stool, it will have pale stool. Okay, this is very important about conjugated, conjugated bilirubin. Next question. An 80-year-old woman who has suffered a fall is found lying on the floor where she has been for over 12 hours. Initial assessment shows that she has a core temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. What would the expected early physiological response to her body temperature be? Uh, increased fat metabolism, increased the constriction of peripheral blood vessels, Increased hypothalamic set point, increased metabolic rate, uh, increased thyroid activity. Um, decrease. I don't know the answer, and I don't want to waste your time. So, <laughs> no one can answer this question. What? Vasoconstriction, B option. B option, exactly. This is the early, uh, expect early physiological response to body decrease from body temperature. Uh, 
there will be constriction of the peripheral blood vessel to because uh, the, yani, the skin the skin is not an important organ so all these organs try to constrict to uh, provide warm body warm blood to the internal organs and at the same time the blood uh, uh, the blood through the skin are exposed to cold weather and to uh, decrease its blood pressure its blood temperature its temperature so constriction the skin to decrease the loss of them uh, of temperature from and loss of heat from the blood so increase constriction of peripheral blood vessels next question uh, a 12 year old boy presents to the emergency department two hours after helping his father cut the grass he complains of rhinorrhea, itchy eyes, sneezing, and a blocked nose. He is apyrexial with hemoglobin of 12 gram per deciliter and white blood cell 6.8 with a raised eosinophil count. Chest X-ray is clear which immunoglobin is most likely. I think it is a repeated question from Fauzia Sheet 1. IgE due to anaphylaxis. IgE, exactly. This is anaphylaxis. Uh, patient has rhinorrhea. So to have the patient has cutting grass and has... Uh, rhinorrhea from uh, pollen or something like this, sneezing, blocked nose, hemoglobin normal, and the patient has eosinophilia, this is eosinophilic, and this tells you that the patient has, uh, uh, that the patient has allergic reaction. So this is IgE is the most common for immediate hypersensitivity, atopy, or anaphylaxis, or asthma. As we said, just put this in your mind. Put this in your mind. Acid, acid acti, acid acti. Okay, next question. A 45 year old man presented with back, back ache and leg pain due to prolapsed lumbar intervertebral disc. The pain, which is aggravated by coughing and sneezing, radiates to the dorsum of his foot. Uh, on examination, there is weakness of the dorsiflexion of the foot. Which nerve root is most likely to be involved? Uh, it will be... Without uh, shoes, uh, dorsiflexion of the foot, what? Dorsiflexion, it will be L4. L sorry, dorsiflexion, it will be... Uh, it will be S1. 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 Dorsiflexion. L5. You said yesterday. Hip flexion, L2. Knee extension, L3. Foot dorsiflexion L4. Big two dorsiflexion L5. Plantar flexion S1. The flexion S1. Yes. Okay. Two, three, four, five, S1. Just know it like this. Just know it like this. Okay, so here is the patient. Back pain due to prolapsed lumbar intervertebral disc, aggravated with coughing, sneezing. Okay, so this is lumbar disc prolapse. Pain reduced to the dorsum of the foot. In examination, there is weakness of dorsiflexion of the foot, which is the most, most likely. Most, there is weakness. Here is, there is weakness of the dorsiflexion. What is the most likely? The most likely is here is what? L4. L I couldn't L4. find L4. What it can be? Dorsiflexion of the big two. Dorsiflexion of the big two is L5. So this is the would be the most L5. close answer. L5. Mm. But if I if I didn't find L4, I'll go for L5. S1 is dorsiflexion. Okay. And plantar flexion. S1 mm. is plantar flexion. L3 is very high. This is a quadriceps for the knee. Quadriceps for the knee. L4 and L5 responsible for the foot and back two. Okay. Clear? 
clear. Okay, next question. Uh, a 75 year old woman uh, who has a carcinoma of upper rectum undergoes anterior resection, the arterial blood supply of the upper rectum arises from which of the following? Celiac artery, iliocolic, inferior mesenteric artery, internal iliac artery, superior mesenteric artery. Uh, it's I think inferior mesenteric artery. From the inferior artery. mesenteric artery. Exactly. The rectum and left side colon coming from the inferior mesenteric artery through the superior rectal artery. Superior rectal artery. Okay, next question. A 65 year old man is undergoing an abdominal aortogram. Astenosis is demonstrated in a lateral aortic branch uh, arising at the level of the body of the second lumbar vertebra. The stenotic vessel is most likely to be celiac, inferior mesenteric, left renal, second left lumbar, superior mesenteric. Uh, as, uh, as, uh, at level of L2, uh, it may be, uh, uh, may be renal vessels, uh, celiac, left renal artery. At level of L2. Uh, astenosis is demonstrated in a lateral celiac at the level of L1. arising at the level of the body of, of the, the second, second lumbar vertebra. Right. Astenosis vessel is most likely to have the aortic ram. Astenosis is demonstrated in the lateral aortic branch. Lateral aortic branch arising at the level of the body of second lumbar vertebra. Um, celiac artery not uh, at that it's at the level of L1 and it is not lateral branch. Inferior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric artery is the same. So we choose between C and D, left renal artery or second left lumbar artery. Um, I, 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 the most most common here uh, said is the left second left uh, second left lumbar, lumbar artery. Hmm. Second left lumbar artery. Left renal artery, left renal artery is in a higher level than the second, than the right renal artery. At the upper the border way. of L2, yes. Exactly, it's at okay. L1. This mainly, mainly is at L1, mainly left renal artery at L1, but the gonadal vessel and the gonadal vessels and the, and the second left, uh, second left uh, lumbar artery is at the level of L2. This was the most accurate answer, by the way. The most because he, he said at here the is L1 like, is more yeah. left renal is mainly at L1. Yes, at the body exactly. But in L2, body of the second of L2, but it will be the second left renal or the second left lumbar or the gonadal vessels. Gonadal okay. Vessels. Okay. Okay. Complete or someone? Next, next, next. Next, Tana, uh, who can, who can, who is ready to continue, please? Wait, who's ready to continue, please? Hello, Dr. Zazna. Dr. Ahmad Al Morsi. Dr. Dalia. Dr. Dr. Gazna. At least they should uh, have one one question or two two questions to participate all. Can I go Sorry? with question 31? Hey, Dr. Rami, hey, all okay. they should try to participate. I, I want to all to participate. By the way, if you didn't trans uh, any participate, really, it, you'll find it easy. I want to break the exam uh, fear and the exam and anxiety. Reading the Can question, question it makes this very easy. Yes. Yes, oh, doctor. Doctor, who wants to participate, Doctor? Indu. Who, who wants to participate, Doctor Indu? Okay, Doctor Indu. Okay, you can uh, go for the next ten questions, please. Yeah, a forty-year-old man is admitted to the surgical day case unit for repair of his uh, left inguinal hernia. On examination, he is noted to have diffuse skin taining, 
spotty pigmentation of the elbows, nipples, and buttocks, and pigmentation of the scar from a previous right inguinal hernia repair. Three hours after the operation, B becomes severely hypotensive. What is the most likely cause? ACTH deficiency, adrenal insufficiency, growth hormone deficiency, potassium deficiency, and thyroxine deficiency. This is... Um, You can try to exclude all. What you, what you expect this patient to have? What is this picture of diffuse skin tanning, spotty pigmentation, elbow nipple, especially the buttocks? Yani, you have a very uh, uh, key answer here, very common key answer. You only find it in, 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 this, in this part of disease through your study in MRCS or past test, pigmentation of the buttocks or pigmentation of the body, elbows, nipples, and buttocks. This is characteristic for what? Addison's disease. Addison disease, hyperpigmentation, if you can see it. Hyperpigmentation is a characteristic for Addison disease. Characteristic for Addison disease. And the body, by the way, it is a monomic when you go for the exam and you find Patient has tanning, spotty pigmentation, especially, and he mentioned the buttocks. This patient, 100%, it is Addison disease. And this patient is susceptible for Addisonian, Addisonian crisis or adrenal insufficiency during surgery if this patient is not uh, controlled before surgery. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this patient has adrenal insufficiency. insufficiency or a Dysonian crisis that happened intraoperative after two hours of operation. Okay, next question. A 19-year-old woman presents to the emergency department profoundly hypovolemic having fallen from hose. A posterior anterior chest radiograph shows a fracture to the medial third of the left clavicle. Which of the following vessels was most likely da damaged? Nineteen-year-old woman. The left subclavian artery. Okay. Left subclavian artery. Fair. Left subclavian artery. Patient is profoundly hypovolemic. After five so this is big artery has been. Uh, injured and the medial third of the left clavicle, the medial third. So here is the most common will be the artery or the vein, the artery or the vein. So the artery will be the most common here. There is no the vein, the artery. Sometimes confusing if you get the artery and the vein. And this is by the way, I saw one question before, but it was. It was the. So if we have a vein in the option, then. If you have the vein in the option, have, I don't think that you will be in the bus. But in the vein, maybe in, in uh, if he has the vein and the artery, I think you will get till you fracture in the middle, in the middle third of the clavicle. So you have to choose the artery as well because the vein will be in the medial third. Okay, thank you. But but this is the most common question, by the way. Medial third, and he will not be, and he will not confuse you so much. He will give medial third to tell you the group of the artery uh, in the subclavi in the in the clavicle below the clavicle. Next question. Sixty-five-year-old okay. man presented with an inguinoscrotal swelling in the right groin, which is non-tender. The cough impulses is elicited. 
at operation, an indirect inguinal hernia is repaired. The cremasteric muscle is derived from which of the following? It is um, internal oblique muscle, answer B. Internal oblique muscle, perfect. Internal oblique muscle. Okay, what is the most common? The most common, he will tell you in the exam, by the way, is the most common. External oblique will give you uh, the external spermatic fascia from the external oblique. Then the cremasteric uh, fascia will derive from the internal oblique. Then the internal spermatic fascia will be from the fascia transversalis. And the uh, uh, the tonic vaginalis and uh, tonic vaginalis will be derived from the peritoneum. Tonic vaginalis will be derived from the peritoneum. This is the most common, by the way. Okay, and this is the layer, skin, dartus, and the subcutaneous tissue, external, from external oblique, cremasteric, from internal oblique, internal spermatic from, uh, internal spermatic from the transverse, fascia transversalis, then the peritoneum will give you the tonica vaginalis. Okay, next question. A 70-year-old woman is in the recovery area and receives 28% of oxygen by mask. Blood gas shows uh, pH 7.1, pCO2 10 kilopascal, PO2 12 kilopascal. Reduced sensitivity. What is this problem? Of... Yeah. What is this, this problem? Is... PCO2 is elevated. Yeah, so, and pH is? pH is low. So, it is a case of? First type of metabolic disappearance, respiratory acidosis, exactly, okay, so. Reduced sensitivity of which of the receptors is most likely to responsible for this blood gas? Adrenergic receptors, baroreceptors, central chemoreceptors, J receptors, lung stretch receptors. I think it is uh, central chemoreceptors. Exactly. Central chemoreceptor is, 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 is sensitive to the pH and CO2. pH and CO2. Okay. This is central chemoreceptors. Is sensitive to increase in the CO2. So very nice explanation. We have this central chemoreceptor responsible for increasing CO2 and decrease in pH uh, and the in decrease in pH as well. So central chemoreceptors is the right answer. Okay, next question, please. A 20-year-old man presents with pain in his left scrotum. A diagnosis of varicocele is made. Which vessel is involved? What are the veins that are responsible for varicose veins? Testicular vein. Exactly. Gonadal vein or testicular vein, pampiniform process of veins, then we will give you pampiniform uh, plexus of veins. Pampiniform plexus will go the testicular or the gonadal vessels. Okay, we have to re always remember this is very important that the right gonadal vessel yeah. drain direct to the IVC, but the left drain direct to the left renal vein that's why there is a high pressure because the low the small caliper of the left renal vein so there is almost high pressure in the left testicular or gonadal vessels more than the right side 
okay? And it is more susceptible for varicose vein. And some theorists say there is no, uh, um, there is no uh, uh, absolute right varicosity. They always define it as left or bilateral because there is some communication, it is assumed there is some communication between the post pampiniform plexus of veins. So you can find it left or left and right. But you can't find it only, uh, only right, except if you have any problem, yani, uh, yani it is not very common even in, in anyone works in this surgical field. Never ever you can see varicose vein without any left side varicose vein. Okay, next question. A 60 year old man who is a heavy smoker presents with a 10 day history of a frank, painless hematuria. His prostate is slightly enlarged on rectal examination. His hemoglobin is 11.3 creatinine 84 and prostate specific antigen is 3.1. What is the most likely pathological process? Benign prostatic hyperplasia, prostate cancer, renal cell carcinoma, transitional cell carcinoma of bladder, urinary tract infection. In a patient who is a heavy smoker with the history of frank painless hematuria, enlarged prostate, PSA is 3.1, uh, suggestive of transitional cell carcinoma of bladder. Exactly, transitional. This patient is old patient, okay, heavy smoker. Sorry, heavy smoker and have frank maturia. So what is the most common pathology associated with Frank hematuria and heavy smoker patient. And he wants to tell you that the prostatic specific antigen and the creatinine and all this are not highly elevated. So he wants you to go away from prostatic cancer. So this is transitional cell carcinoma of the bladder. And this is associated also with heavy smoke. Okay, risk factors smoking, dyes used in rubber, cable industry and common and cytotoxin or uh, treat uh, tamoxifen with uh, cytotoxin for cervical cancer. Okay, next question. A 34 year old woman presents with an irregular mass in the right breast, which is clinically, radiologically and histologically malignant. Her mother died of breast cancer at the age of 58 and her grandmother died of ovarian cancer at the age of 55. Which gene is most likely to be involved in the development of this woman tumor? BRCA1, HMLH1, KRAS, P53, P10. The most common breast cancer uh, associated with uh, yeah. family history. BRCA1? Berka, exactly. This is the most common gene associated with familial or inherited breast cancer is the Burkham. All these are, by the way, are the carcinogenic uh, uh, oncogenes, but BRCA1, BRCA1 and BRCA2 are the most common associated with breast cancer. You can see breast cancer here in this nice uh, diagram. Uh, CHEK and P10 and ATM and P53 and many, many other oncogenes can be responsible for breast cancer, but you can see the BRCA1 and BRCA2 have the most common and the uh, most likely to be involved in breast cancer. Okay? Yes. Next question. 65 year old man presents with a non tender swelling in the right hemiscrotum. At operation, the hydrocele sac is opened and 400 milliliter of fluid is drained. Which anatomical structure surrounds the fluid? Data's muscle, patent processus vaginalis, testicular capsule, tunica albuginea, tunica vaginalis. Answer tunica vaginalis, E. Okay, tuning of the analysis. 
is a layer around this fluid. From which layer it is driven? From plutonium. Plutonium. Thanks, Dr. Duffer. Welcome oh. back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Be ready for the next thing question, Dr. Duffer. I'm ready. Okay, Dr. Indu, okay. Continue, Dr. Indu. Yes. A 24-year-old man is brought to the emergency department following a road traffic accident. He has obvious airway compromise due to mouth facial hemorrhage, which requires a surgical airway. The surface landmarks used to localize the optimal site for a tracheostomy incision are midway between the suprastinal notch and which of the following? Cricoid, hyoid, mastoid, laryngeal prominence, thyroid. It is cricoid, answer A. Cricoid, exactly. Midway between the cricoid and suprasternal notch is a optimal site for tracheostomy incision. As we see here, cricoid cartridge and sternal notch. From where's incision? Okay. Yes. Next and last question, please. A 60 year old man has an anterior resection for a high rectal carcinoma. The histopathology report indicates the lesion is Duke stage B. What is the appropriate approximate average five years survival rate for patients with these lesions? Look to the photo. Five years survival for each stage. Uh, 70 percentage on the day. 70 percent. Excuse me, Dr. Rami, this uh, is a uh, common question coming exams? Yes. Came to me on my exam. The percentage or the, uh, the Duke's classification? Duke's classification percentage is a very common question in the exam. Put in your mind first one, stage A or Duke's A, 95. By the way, he will not confuse you. You will find 90 and 95, you will not find 80, you will find 70 or something like this. A stage, a stage one or Duke's A is 95. Is 95, okay. Dukes two or Dukes B, 70 or 80. He will not, he will not make 80 and 90. He will give 70 and 90. And sometimes he gives stage four, which is 5%. Very common, by the way, this, this question. Um, I, I, I didn't see this before. So A, 95%, you'll find B, 70%. So 95, 70%, then miss one stage and then you'll find 5% stage four. Keep only this percent. This is the only percent Yani from the real percent you'll find in questions in for Marcias. Okay, thank you, Dr. Indu. Uh, Dr. Doffer, uh, yes, welcome and you can start the next thing question if you please. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, a 40, 41 question. A 20 years old man presented to the emergency department after accident stop uh, tripping over a hand laceration of the hand on the glass bottle. On examination, there is two centimeter laceration on the hypothenar eminence with loss of the flexion on the distal pharyngeal joint of the little finger. What is the most tendon uh, to be injured? Flexor digiti minimi, previous. Flexor digitorium profunda. Flexor digitorium superficialis. Fourth palmar introsius. Lumbar, lumbarical. So it is B, flexor digitorium profunda. Okay. As we know, Flexor digitorum profunda is responsible for the flexion of the distal pharynx. Uh, very common question also in exam, by the way. Cause of flexion of the distal pharynx is the flexor digitorum profunda. Next question. Okay. <clears throat> and also another note, 
if you follow Dr. Rami, you can uh, resolve 70% to the 75% of question in the exam. This is real. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And, and yeah. this is recalls incomplete scenarios. I, I don't I don't concentrate or recall. I concentrate for you. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> really, really. Yes. I'm sorry. But really, when you focus with the Dr. Rami, with good focusing, you get 80. If you're not focusing, you get 70 or 75. Really? Thank you. <laughs> really, really. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dr. Lowe. I follow thank you, you. For, more, for more than many years. So I, I guess, how do you think about MRCS? I, sometimes I think so you, you are part from it. <laughs> no, thank uh, you. Oh, 75 just, years. just trying. Thank okay. you. Uh, okay. Seven, Yala. Uh, 75 years old man who is smoking heavily and under, underwent coronary artery bypass grafting skin six months ago. Left internal memory artery graft was used. How many complain of the injury? He complained. He, co he may, sorry. He now complain of the angina on the on the bagging his laundry on the wasting line to to dry. Which of the following lesion based explain his symptom? Microemboli from the left coronary artery, microemboli from the left internal memory art, inter, internal carotid artery, stenosis of the subclavian artery at the level of the costal clavicular. Trunk stenosis of the subclavian artery distal to the insertion of the scalenous muscles, stenosis of the uh, scapular artery at the first branch, proximal to the first branch. It's E. E stenosis, subclavian artery, proximal to the first branch. What is the first branch? This is vertebral artery. Okay, this is a very nice picture about the bypass graft. Use the internal memory artery as a bypass graft here, by the way. So the patient is complaining from what's called, we can say it like subclavian steel syndrome. So the patient has here, when making this, sometimes, by the way, this is, I think this is the side of the artery, sometimes make it from here. Uh, sometimes cut it from here to be anastomosed here or or to go direct to the heart to make the I'm not expert in the um, I'm not expert in this operation but this is the internal memory artery used as a bypass graft in cardiac problem so the patient sometimes if he has stenosis proximal to the first branch here he will have angina and sometimes he will have the subclavian steel syndrome as well okay Okay, sorry, yeah, sorry. Plus, okay, clear about this question? Yeah. Okay, next question, please. A 50 years old alcohol man presented to emergency department and is found to be unable to extend his wrist, thumb and finger of his right hand. He is also found to have weakness extension of the right elbow joint and loss of the uh, sensation of the dorsum or the first web space, which nerve is most likely to have injuries? Median nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, posterior cutaneous nerve, radial nerve, and ulnar nerve. It is radial. Radial? Radial nerve, yes, exactly. <laughs>
what is called Saturday night syndrome. Saturday night syndrome. This very common, by the way, alcoholic man, and 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 he stayed or sometimes crutch crutch palsy, crutch palsy or Saturday night syndrome when the patient sleep on his arm on the uh, at the axilla on a chair for a long time or the patient has a crutch for any problem in his lower limb and compression for a long time, the patient has a radial nerve palsy. Okay, next question. 50 years old man presented with the acute back pain. Follow severe traffic accidents. Neurological examination revealed lack of the dorsal flexion of the left ankle joint. Which of the following spine cord segment are the most likely to be injured? Uh, so it is dorsal flexion. It is we're searching about four five. So it's C four five S one. Exactly. As we said, dorsiflexion of the ankle is 4-5. Go to search for 4-5. So the early 2, 3, 4, no, this is the most common. I think it's easy now. Yeah. Okay, next question. 21 years old man is admitted to the emergency department with a stab injury to his right chest. Pulse rate 110 feet per minute and the blood pressure is 85 uh, over 40 millimeter mercury chest x-ray show the large large right hemothorax and a very small right apical pneumothorax which is the first substance secreted uh, in the prison in the presence leading to the increased renal reabsorption of the sodium irresponsible to the above injury Angiotensin 1, angiotensin 2, angiotensinogen, antidiotic hormone, and finally is renin. It's renin. Okay. Renin is the first ticket. Just, uh, just concentrate. The first substance which will uh, release is the renin. Renin is the first substance since uh, 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 will be sensed by the kidney, but just the glomerular apparatus, renin will be released. The renin substrate, again, 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 the renin substrate is angiotensinogen, which will be activated to angiotensinogen, angiotensin, angiotensin 1. Then angiotensin 1 with the angiotensin converting enzyme in the lungs will be converted to angiotensin 2 to go to the its target organs to have its effect. Okay, so renin is the first substance and the substrate for renin is the angiotensinogen. But what is responsible for a renal reabsorption of sodium and of sodium is? What is the, if he asked it, what is the substance is responsible for renal absorption of sodium? Autosterone. Aldosterone. Aldosterone. Just, yes, just concentrate with the question. Aldosterone is which is the last step responsible for the absorption of that. But the first step or the first response is renin. First substance is renin. Next question. Okay. 21 years old man has been stabbed in the back of the knee, dividing the popliteal artery and is under night repair via posterior approach. Which of the phenomenon structure is most likely to be encountered firstly when dissect deep from the skin incision. Popliteal artery, popliteal muscles, popliteal vein, tibial nerve, and soleus muscles. It's tibial nerve. Tibial nerve. From, you have to know the, the, um, the order of these structures, order of this structure. If you have a problem in the knee and you went through a posterior approach, so the tibial nerve will be the first Okay, so the tibial nerve will be the first the first structure injured. If you have a dislocation, dislocation of the uh, knee, and ask you what is the most common structure can be injured is the artery, popliteal artery. Popliteal artery. This is the most superficial 
and this is the most deep structure. The most deep structure in the kidney from posterior is the popliteal artery. Actually, it is adherent to the capsule of the knee posteriorly. That's why it is very common to find an aneurysm of the popliteal artery at the knee, be, behind the knee. One of the most common differential diagnosis of swelling or cystic swelling or cyst on the popliteal fossa is aneurysm of the popliteal artery because of because of the uh, it is fixed part of the artery at the uh, at the popliteal fossa. Okay, keep always this popliteal 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 nerve popliteal uh, popliteal nerve uh, tibial nerve is the most superficial structure. Very common, by the way, in the exam. Okay, next question. Thank you. Dr. Rami, some, some candidates are asking for admin. Uh, no, till now, they didn't appear to me. Uh -oh. I'm following it. Till now, they didn't appear to me. I think it takes a time to appear. Okay, shall we start? Yeah, okay. 70, 78 years old women presented with the urinary urgency and incontinence the external urethral sphincter is innervated in which by which of the following nerve we're searching about pudendal nerve so uh, it is e s2 s3 s4 okay as you said the external urethral sphincter and the external inner sphincter both of them has uh, pudendal nerve supply and they are responsible for the uh, incontinence. Next question. Okay. A 40 years old woman presented with the parotid tumor biopsy revealed preneural invasion, which of the most likely pathology, SNR cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, adenocystic carcinoma, lymphoma, pleomorphic salivary adenoma. So it is C. Perfect. What is the most common benign tumor? It's a pleomorphic uh, uh, salivary adenoma. And the most common malignant? Most common malignant mucoepidermoid. Mucoepidermoid. Most common. Most common benign. Most common benign is pleomorphic adenoma, most common malignant is mucoepidermoid. The most common malignant with epineural invasion is the adenoid cystic carcinoma. You have to concentrate. If it is said the most common malignant, mucoepidermoid, the most common malignant, and give you in the history, epineural invasion or perineural invasion or facial nerve affection. So you'll go for adenoid cystic lymphoma. Adenoid cystic carcinoma, sorry. See here, common neoplasm in both albums. Here's the most common cancer in parotid and the minor salivary gland, according to the mucopidermoid. Adenoid cystic carcinoma, the most common malignancy of submedial gland, second most common salivary cancer, through progression, metastasis, logical subtype, Characteristic with very neural invasion. Next question. A 19 years old man was assaulted as a sustained injury to the right side of head. After two weeks, he is noted uh, he is not a dial his right eye is dry, and it could not produce tear from which of the following ganglia. Is post synaptic fiber arising supply the lacrimal gland, genicular ganglia, inferior ganglion, and ganglion of the vagus, optic ganglia, pterygopalatine ganglia, superior cervical ganglia. So it is D. Pterygopalatine. Pterygopalatine, very common question by the way in the exam. Lacrimal gland, lacrimal gland is pterygopalatine. The eye is the ciliary, ciliary gland to the mucous membrane and the parotid gland, it is the otic. 
aortic ganglia. But trigopalatine is very common. Trigopalatine is, is going to lacrimal gland. Postganglionic lacrimal gland comes through the facial nerve, preganglionic fibers through the facial nerve, and then the postganglionic fibers go to the lacrimal gland and the palate and nose. Palate and nose. Very nice picture about the parasympathetic uh, cranial nerves innervation and the target organs. Next and last 35, question, please. 35 years old, man, undergo right inguinal hernia repair under general anesthesia as a day patient. He has nerve block after procedure on which on recovery he was weakness of the right leg. Which nerve has been a femoral nerve, uh, genital femoral, inguinal, lateral cutaneous, and sciatic. So it's femoral. Weakness of the right leg. Sometimes weakness. He, he he tell you. Sometimes tell you weakness and extension of the right leg. Weakness of extension of the right leg. Sometimes the question come like this. So it will be the uh, femoral nerve because it supplies a quadriceps. What is the root value of femoral nerve? L uh, three. L two three four. L two three four. L two three four responsible for quadriceps this will make weakness again okay, anterior division weakness of the area okay thank you who's next should we start okay we are back yes we can start okay question number 51 a man suffers a brachial plexus injury on examination, he has a Horner syndrome in association with upper limb paralysis. Which nerve root does the Horner syndrome suggest involvement of? Uh, so the Horner syndrome usually involves T1. So I think D option C8 and D1 is the answer. Hello, sir. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Horner syndrome. Sorry, again. Horner syndrome. Which nerve root is most commonly to be affected in Horner syndrome? And in which T1. operation you can... Yeah. T1. What is the name of the ganglia? Is that sympathetic? Cervical sympathetic, I guess. Oh, yes, stellate ganglia. Stellate ganglia. By the way, this is very common here. Say again, this question can come in another picture. So here is the picture is, um, here is the picture is the patient has a brachial plexus injury and upper limb paralysis and he has Horner's so Sometimes this question come with, uh, tell you the patient go for, Dorsal sympathectomy, dorsal sympathectomy for um, axillary or axilla hyper or palmar, axillary or palmar, palmar, sometimes palmar, hyper hydrosis. You go for dorsal sympathectomy. Which vessels, which vessels do we damage in, in dorsal sympathectomy? Which, sorry, nerve root, which, do, which dorsal ganglia to decrease the hyperhidrosis in the axilla and the, and the hand? Anyone know?
اللي هو نو ان دورسال سيمباسيكتومي يو هاف ذا ريسبونسبل فور هايبر هايتروزيس تي 1 تي 2 اند تي 3 اكشلي ان دورسال سيمباسيكتومي وي اونلي بيرن اور دامج تي 2 And T3, because if we damage T1, we are very close to the stellate ganglia responsible for Horner syndrome. Okay. Right. By the way, yani, yani another, yani, uh, yani, yani, you will hear, uh, listen to it and forget it again. And also in lumpar sympathectomy, lumpar sympathectomy. For any other cause like some neuralgia or some pain or or, or lumbar sympathectomy, we damage starting from L2, L3, or L4, whatever the nerve root we want to damage for uh, maybe treatment of patient like uh, hyperactive uh, patient has uh, some sort of uh, lower limb ischemia and we know we want to uh, 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 functional lower limb. Uh, Ischemia due to hyperactivity of the vessels and vasoconstriction, uh, like Raynaud syndrome and something like this, we need to, to decrease the, 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 the vasoactive, uh, uh, the vasoactivity of the vessels of the uh, lower limb. We go for dorsal lumbar sympathectomy. We start from L2, L3, L4, and we have to avoid L1 for which cause. Where is Dr. Ahmad Aiz? Anyone here? Urology. Why we get away from L1 and lumpar sympathectomy? No one urology with us here? What? I guess no, sir. I am urology, but I don't know Dr. Rami. Okay, L1, if you, if you damage L1, uh, this will affect the uh, premature ejaculation. And sometimes erectile dysfunction, or I think premature, premature ejaculation, if you go for okay. L1. Go for lumpar and, go for lumpar and dorsal sympathectomy. Dorsal sympathectomy, you have to avoid T1. Lumpar sympathectomy, you have to avoid L1. Search for it and make sure that my information is still because this information about 10 years ago, as, as, as long as ca I, I can remember. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone make sure and give us the feedback. Next question, Dr. Wagi. Okay. Uh, 52, a 60 year old woman with breast carcinoma complains of difficulty chewing her food and is found to have numbness of lower lip on one side. This scan shows a small metastatic lesion affecting the bony skull base on the same side as the limb, uh, uh, lip numbness. Which foramen is most likely to be involved? Uh, the lip numbness can be due to mandibular nerve and uh, it uh, comes from uh, uh, foramen oval, I guess. Yes, exactly. From the scenario, difficult to chewing. Hair food muscles of mastication supplied mainly by mandibular Which part of the trigeminal? Third part. Trigeminal. Third part. Uh, mandibular. Mandibular. Uh, V3. Huh? Muscles of mastication. Mandibular nerve of the trigeminal nerve. Responsible third, for third branch. Mm. Third branch. So here he want you on yani this is indirect question. Difficult chewing her food. So he asking about muscles of mastication. Mm. Which branchial arch? Uh, second. Or the second oh, facial. Second second, uh, second, second sevens. Second uh, sevens. Are you? Facial, facial muscles, muscles of facial expression. Yes. First, mandibular, mm. 
muscles of mastication. mastication. It is not very common to come in the exam, but I just want to make it a hint to remember. Yeah. I said, remember the first, remember the second, remember the six. Six pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary artery and ductus arteriosus. Second, seventh, facial. Second, seventh, facial and stapedius or stapedius muscle, stapedial muscle, or stapes or something like this. First, mandibular and muscles of mastication. Clear? Clear. Okay, so here it's asking about the mandibular, so he wanted you to remind what is the mandibular coming from, which is the foramen oval. No exam, follow from two to three questions about the foramens. No exam about the foramens, please, please, please. Excuse me, Dr. Rami. Mm, yes. Um, I have a small Dr. Hindu. Is it uh, first mandibular, second is seventh now, and uh, second is facial, seventh. Uh, and please explain the sixth one again. I missed it. The sixth branchial arch gives the uh, pulmonary trunk oh, or pulmonary oh, artery or ductus arteriosus. Thank you very much. We, we explained it in yesterday uh, discussion of Hosea sheet number one. We said first okay. mandibular, not very common in the exams. Second is the most common, second and sixth, very common in exams. Second, S, seventh cranial nerve, S, stabus, ostavidius, ostavidial muscle, all starting with S and uh, responsible muscles of facial expression. Six, you will find pulmonary trunk, pulmonary artery, or ductus arteriosus. Okay. You, uh, sorry, Dr. Rami. Uh, question uh, uh, 51 it is a uh, complex uh, syndrome, complex uh, paralysis, palsy. What? This, uh, 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 this, this is a palsy, com complex palsy, complex palsy. What's the name? No, this is Horner syndrome. Uh, yeah, it's associated with the paralysis of the upper limb. It's a uh, 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 clump paralysis, as they call it. Clump paralysis. Okay, yes, uh, associated maybe with clump paralysis. Okay, but I, I'm just wanted to explain why Horner syndrome. As you see, Horner syndrome, you could search for T1. Hmm. And we asked it about the injury of the dorsal lumbar of the lumbar uh, sympathetic ganglia. I don't know you you was with us or you you no, wasn't. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Funko. You wasn't. We asked it about because uh, we said we are doing dorsal sympathectomy. We have to avoid injury of T1, T1. and we do uh, only T3 and T2, T2 and T3 uh, for treatment of hyperhidrosis of the palm and axilla. Yes. Okay. When we are treating some vasoactive or vasospastic condition of the lower limb, like in diabetic patient and Raynaud syndrome or something like this, we do what is called lumpar sympathectomy. Lumpar sympathectomy. In lumpar sympathectomy, you avoid to injure L1. L1. Why? ejaculation. Premature ejaculation. Yes. Premature ejaculation. And do it L2, L3, L4? L2, L3 only. Uh, I think L2, L2, L3, I can't remember L4. But mm. L2, I think uh, Dorsen of L2, L3. I think so. Mm. Mm. And the, the upper limb paralysis is uh, due to uh, the root C8 for the radial? Yes, associated C8, T1. The, 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 here is the, um, the injury makes C8, C8, T1. This makes the lower brachial plexus injury. Plus in T1 is associated with, if it is passes to the, the dorsal ganglia, uh, the dorsal ganglia, sympathetic ganglia, it will cause Horner syndrome. Horner syndrome. Not a must, but if it, if it affects the dorsal ganglia, it will affect the, it will uh, be accompanied with Horner syndrome. Yeah. Okay, next question. Turagi, Fadr. Thank you. 
53 sir which one of the following muscles is an extensor of the hip so extensors of the hip is the semi tendinous and semi membranous semi tendinous extensors semi of the hip is semi tendinous this is a summary for most important muscle for the flexion abduction extension and so on the most powerful extensor is the gluteus maximus and semi tendinous and semi membranous as well this is very important flexion taban the most powerful is the ilius so what's by the way in the immerses uh, and the immerses he asks for the uh, the most common or the uh, uh, the most powerful muscle he wants you to know roughly he don't want to know all the list of these muscles okay he just want to, to to know in abduction gluteus medius and medius mainly and gluteus minimus that's why we have the trendelberg uh, syndrome or the trendelberg sign in uh, superior gluteal nerve injury affecting the gluteus medius okay in flexion he wants to know that the most powerful flexor of the hip is the iliopsoas muscle and where is it inserted in extension he wants you to know that gluteus maximus is one of the powerful extensors of the hip together with the semimembranous and semitendinous and the long head of biceps okay right Okay, next next question. 54. In order to expose the right axillary artery, a transverse incision is typically made below the clavicle from a point just later to the sternal end of the clavicle to the deltopectoral groove. Which of the following structures would be encountered in the dissection down the vessel? Uh, it will be uh, thracoacromial artery. Thracoacromial artery, very common question in the exam. Yeah. Deltopectoral groove or deltopectoral fascia to expose the axillary artery. Okay, I have any uh, more clear question about this, about the incision of the deltopectoral fascia. If you go and write the deltopectoral fascia in Google and the search by photos, you will find uh, the cephalic vein and the uh, thoracoacromial artery or sometimes acromiothoracic artery is passing through this uh, visit. By the way, thoracoacromial artery has three main branch, acromial branch, deltoid branch, and pectoral branch. And this is are susceptible for injury and the bleeding during the section through the thoraco, uh, so the deltopectoral fascia. Mm -hmm. Next question. Okay. 55-year-old um, man presents to the emergency department after collapsing. On examination, his pulse is 124 beats per minute. Blood pressure is 60-30. Respiratory rate is 34 beats per minute. And his peripheries are warm. What is the most likely diagnosis? Uh, warm peripheries uh, means he has septic shock, so it will be sepsis, hypovolemia, and warm peripheries. What you expect? Sepsis, septic shock. Okay. E what you find here? What you find here in this patient? He's in, he's in state of shock. Blood pressure is low. Tachycardic. And peripheries are warm. Yes? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay. So we want to search about low blood pressure, tachycardia, and tachypnea, plus low systemic vascularization. Go for here. In hypovolemia, you'll find the increased systemic vascular resistance only is septic. septic. If you make this in the exam, mm -hmm. so you can go for what you need. This is the main right. parameters, by the way, you have to search about blood pressure, pulse, and systemic vascular resistance. 
So you have here patient hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, warm skin, decreased systemic vascular resistance. This is a warm picture of septic shock. Septic shock, right, sir. Okay. Right. The only hypotension with all our hypotension because this is, this is a shock. We are playing with the pulse and systemic vascular resistance. Okay. The only hypotension with predicard is neurogenic shock. Okay. Even also here, systemic right. vascular resistance will be low. Systemic vascular resistance will be low, by the way, here also, as he, he lost the sympathetic tone, together with the septic shock. So Does this and this will be have systemic vascular resistance. Though. Sorry? Yes, only the neurogenic shock okay. with bradycardia. Everyone else will have tachycardia. The only is bradycardia. When bradycardia go direct for all our tachycardia, except for neurogenic shock. Mostly yes. all our systemic vascular resistance increase with hypotension, except for mainly septic shock and neurogenic shock. Clear? Okay, for you, just know this and forget about it. So there is hypotension. There is blood pressure. blood pressure and pulse uh, and the uh, mm, mm, mm. sorry systemic well, vascular resistance system was this is low and low systemic vascular resistance and both of them and both of them will have warm I'm talking about neurogenic and septic shock. Both of them has a low blood pressure, have a low systemic vascular resistance and warm hand. From the warm hand, how to differentiate between septic and neurogenic shock? Patient without, without, without capillary, the pulse capillary, of the patient. Capillary refilling. There is capillary two things refilling. to differentiate between neurogenic and septic. From the hand, Yusuf. What the pulse? I guess pulse. This is tacky and this is brady. And what else? Just from the hand. If you look to the hand, like Doctor Ahmed was saying, capillary dry skin, dry skin, flesh skin, dry skin, sweet skin, dry skin. This is neurogenic because this will affect the muscles of sweet glands. Sweet glands. The uh, what's called the name of the muscle of the sweet gland? The uh, the pillar, pillar muscle, the pillar muscle that as uh, the uh, smooth muscle of the pillar muscle that are uh, responsible for contraction of the sweet glands to make sweetie. Okay. This will affect, so there is no sweeting. This will be dry skin, but in um, sympathetic hyper septic shock, the hand will be sweetie hand and septic shock will be sweet. Clear? <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, next question. Dr. Ravi, uh, In the posterior lateral approach to the posterior medullar fracture, an incision is made between the 
calcaneum achilles tendon and the distal fibula which of the following structures are at risk posterior medullar fracture achilles tendon uh, it can be sural nerve option d sural nerve this is anatomy pure you are making incision on the medial malleolus posterior malleolar fracture and incision between the calcaneus and incision between the calcaneus here midway between the calcaneus and the medial malleolus or the distal fibula so you are on the medial side of the leg which of the following structure is at risk is the sural nerve sural nerve mm -hmm. Uh, on the medial uh, side of the leg, medial malleolus, midway between the calcaneus and the medial malleolus. Okay? No, no, no. Uh, lateral side of the leg. Lateral side of the leg, sorry. Lateral side of the leg. Lateral side of the leg. So the sural nerve will be at risk. <laughs> Yes, I need someone concentrating with me because sometimes when I'm busy just uh, 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 thinking about many things, so make it uh, lateral side of the leg. Okay. Uh, next question. A 25-year-old woman undergoes an elective right thoracoscopic procedure for the treatment of right palmar hypodrosis. That yes, this is the second the question we talk about. Yes, sir. Anterior to the neck of the first rib, what is the likely complication to occur as a result of this procedure? So it will be Horner syndrome. We just talked about that. Horner syndrome. I don't know, by the way, that uh, this, uh, the question is coming here. I can't remember in which recall, but that's good that the two questions came here. You see, here is right Thoracoscopic procedure, treatment of right palm hyperhidrosis. We go only for T2 and T3. If we went for the neck of the first trip, the dorsal ganglia, the first dorsal ganglia T1 is just very close to the tip for to the neck of the first trip. So it means that you injure T1. Injuring to T1 will cause Horner syndrome. Okay, I think no need to to explain again. Next question. A 34-year-old man presents to the orthopedic outpatient clinic with a six-month history of low back pain radiating to the lateral aspect of the left upper thigh. Micturating and defecation are normal and there is no history of previous injury. On examination, left lateral flexion of the spine is limited but a full range of um, hip movements are observed, although it is painful. Sensation is altered over the front of the knee. Left knee reflex is reduced, which spinal nerve? So I guess the knee comes with L3, option C. Anyone has different answer? Sensation is later on the front of the knee. Uh, L4. Okay, this question came and this question came in the past as by by the way. You have two questions about injury and uh, weakness, weakness uh, of knee reflex, weakness of knee reflex. One question will be L3 and the other will be L4. Okay. If just gives product weakness of knee reflex knee reflex, you have to go for, for you have to go for L4, uh, all, all, all L3 mainly, L3 mainly, L3, L4, but L3 mainly. But if you have a sensation arter over the front of the knee, sensation on the front of the knee is mainly by L4. By the way, confusing question between L3 and L4. But yani, uh, we collected before the two question from the, uh, from the um, from the past test and from the EMRCS, uh, sensation alter, alter sensation on the front of the knee mainly will be L4. 
because both of them responsible for the near effect. And he said here, Biolex, he, he said reduced. Okay. okay. Uh, really confusing, Dr. Right. I asked uh, two, two bureaus earlier. Okay, can, uh, I can't hear you go, Dr. Zakir. One told me L3, one told me L4 about this uh, reflex and the sensation. Both a confusing, confusing question, yeah. confusing question. And by the way, many questions in the exam you found. You found the exam about three to four to five questions are discussed from exam when there is a debate about the exam. And this is one of the questions about debate. Yeah. Okay. A scenario in EMRCS, a scenario in past test, one saying L3, but doesn't mention doesn't mention this one. That's alternation. The only question in past test mentions that there is alteration of the sensation in front of the knee answered it L4. Yeah. Okay, so right. Okay. Next question. Okay. A twenty-five year a twenty-five year old motorcyclist is admitted following a road traffic accident, having sustained bilateral femoral fractures and a ruptured spleen. Three days post op lie is noted to be confused, hypoxemic, and difficult to ventilate. His observations show a, show a blood pressure of 120 80 regular pulse of 88 and is apraxial. A chest texture shows it is uninfluent. What is the most likely diagnosis? Uh, sir, this can be uh, ARDS option A, adult respiratory distress syndrome. Okay, a minute, please. Because he was ventilated in the hospital. So your answer is ARDS. Yes, yes, yes. So this is admitted with road traffic having in sustained fracture, ruptures, spleen. He's not at the having difficult. His observation blood pressure, high rigor and abraxian chest x ray. Sounds like underlying the diagnosis. Exactly. This is adult respiratory stress syndrome. Okay, I just want to to um, share a picture to the group. Okay, copy. Uh, I sent a picture to the group about um, sensory innervation of the uh, lower limb. You find L4 mainly in the front of the knee. Okay, sir. Okay, all, all can see this picture. Back, okay. See the picture? Yeah, next question, please. Dr. Romy. Uh, yes. Dr. Romy. Yes. Uh, before we leave, before we leave the previous question. Yeah, which one? You are yes? Uh, yes. Yes. Is there, uh, um, the patient has bilateral femoral fracture and the hypoxic yes. three days post-operative. I, I expect the patient to be bedridden. I expect the patient to by bilateral femoral fracture to be bedridden. Um, and the uh, patient is hypoxic. Why not pulmonary embolism? Because of bilateral diffuse lung infiltrates.
there's three points apyroxia decreased yes. respiratory uh, pulse rate okay and uh, after major trauma it may be complicated by the rds it is the major trauma what is the clinical picture of Tachycardia. Pulmonary embolism. High potential bradycardia. High potential bradycardia. These are the key answers. Okay? Okay. Convinced with it? Okay. 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 Next question. Question number 60. On an ultrasound scan of the popliteal fossa, when investigating a swelling, uh, which of the following structure is closest to the capsule of the knee joint? So closest to the capsule will be artery, popliteal artery, option B. We just, we just mentioned it. The most yes. close structure is the popliteal artery and the most structure uh, uh, susceptible for injury in knee dislocation is a popliteal artery. In knee surgery, posterior approach will be the tibial nerve. Tibial nerve. Tibial nerve. Tibial nerve. Okay, who's next can uh, continue from 61, please? Did I? Thank you, Dr. Wagi. Okay, Dr. Zafar, it's hotter. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, a 25 years old man sustained a twisting injury with playing football. He developed immediate swelling of the knee, immediate swelling of the knee, and he cannot continue the game. Six months later, he is still not able to football play. Football play, his knee feel unsteady and tend to give away. On examination, he has a full range of the knee motion. Uh, this is the positive anterior draw taste and the small effusion. What is the most likely structure uh, damage? Anterior cruciate, lateral collateral ligament, medial collateral ligament, oblique obliteal ligament, posterior cruciated ligaments. The positive is true, so it is anterior cruciate ligament, emergent. The, yani, the question yani, wants to tell you, yani, yani, he is going to tell you in the question, this is anterior cruciate and want you to choose ligament, something like this. Okay. All, all these signs, even if he told you the patient developed immediate swelling of the knee, this is cruciate, this is cruciate ligament. Immediate swelling, cruciate ligament. Delayed swelling, meniscal tear, or uh, sometimes ligament tear. But immediate swelling, if the patient has an immediate, that's why an orthopedic doctor, when you got uh, the swelling, when happened, if you told him immediately after the trauma, this will be prosognomonic for cruciate attack. All others, the same. Patient has unsteady, tends to give away, this is cruciate. But this one will differentiate for you between anterior and posterior. Positive anterior draw test will be anterior cruciate leg. Okay, next question. Uh, 62 years old man required a partial gastric, uh, gastrectomy for the large benign ulcer in the gastric entrum. When he is reviewed in the clinical six months later, complain of the palpitation, weakness, and the sweating, along with the carpal -like, cramp like abdominal pain, which occur within the hour of eating a uh, meal. Usually he had lie on down from the 30 to 40 minutes until the symptoms subside. What is the most likely causes for this? Symptom, however, cardiac, uh, chronic gastroparesis, dump syndrome, uh, delayed gastric, empty reflex gastritis, recurrent ulceration. So it's B. Early or late? This is uh, early. Early dumping. What is the pathology? Pathophysiology for this? 
it is rapid pro, uh, rapid uh, pass of the hyperosmolar uh, kind on the stomach to the to the duodenum to the duodenum and the intestines okay yeah. what is the late dumping this is late dumping it is hyperglycemia hypo, hypoglycemia due to increase uh, secretion of the insulin perfect and this is a late dumping happens 3 to 4 hours up to 6 hours after food due to the passage of uh, high glucose contents of the and and the release of insulin in a high amount followed by a hypoglycemia okay next question in septic shock no adrenaline is used and increase the systemic vascular resistance this action is a result of the stimulation of which of the following no adrenaline alpha 1 alpha 2 b1 b2 alpha 1 it's alpha 1 I think this repeats from yesterday. Yeah. We said that norepinephrine mainly alpha one. Norepinephrine mainly alpha one. Dobutamine, because this question is also repeated. We said norepinephrine mainly alpha one. Dobutamine mainly beta one. Okay. Sometimes epinephrine mainly beta one, but this is the most common. These are the most common, the most common. By the way, in part B, you'll have a big, he will ask you about dopamine. Dopamine, when I ask you, you have to say, what is the effect of dopamine on the uh, vascular system? It is dose dependent. Okay. Okay. Very, very important to say dopamine is dose, dopamine D, dose dependent. D, D, D is very important. Dopamine in low dose can affect D1. Where is D1? In GITN dysplankinic, renal and dysplankinic. What is most important to you is renal. Cause the renal vasodilation. Okay, make vasodilation and increase the renal blood flow. Then, if you go to a moderate dose, five to ten microgram per kg per minute, it will affect beta one to cause tachycardia. So here, you know, renal vasodilation. And in a very high dose, it will go for alpha one to make vasoconstriction and increase the systemic vascular resistance. Very important dopamine in part B, and I, I, I just put it, maybe you have to, uh, to be asked it in, in part A, if you like it to put a new question, because very common question in part B, dopamine in very low dose will just increase the renal blood flow by affecting the D1 receptors. In moderate dose, it will affect the beta-1 receptors causing tachycardia and very high dose, it will affect the alpha-1 receptors to cause vasoconstriction and uh, increase the systemic vascular resistance like epinephrine. Okay? Next question. A 65 years old man presented with acute epigastric pain and vomiting on examination here. Gardening in the upper abdominal, his taste result. Serum alkalinity is 900, uh, normal less than 100. His serum alkaline phosphate is 61, it's normal less than 50. Uh, alkaline phosphate is 30, uh, 93, in normal range 20 to 120. Albumin, it is 38, normal 38.50. Uh, bilirubin 15 millimole and the triglyceride is 2.89, it's less than 101.7. So, what was the following etiology the condition? This is alcohol. Because of? Because it increased uh, uh, gamma GTA. 
GGT is the most important. GGT is the most important. High amylase and the high GGT is very possible. Pneumonic for uh, alcoholic pancreatitis. Also, the, by the way, triglycerides is high in, in alcoholic patients. Triglycerides is high in alcoholic patients. Okay. Okay. A 74 years old woman with end stage renal failure. 47. 47 years old woman with end stage renal failure required an elective cholecystectomy for rheumatic cholesterol disease. Her hemoglobin preoperative 7.2 gram per deciliters. What is the major cause of the anemia? Calcium deficiency, erythropoietin deficiency, folate deficiency, iron deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency. So it's B, erythropoietin deficiency. Exactly, erythropoietin deficiency is very uh, common problem patient with chronic renal failure. Okay. Uh, and this is the main cause of Resuropietin also is the main cause of polycythemia in patients with Spirenectomy, post-spirenectomy. Renal cell carcinoma. Renal cell carcinoma. Renal cell carcinoma and one of the paraneoplastic syndrome is polycythemia. Polycythemia due to increase in erythropoietin one of the series increase in presupitin activity, okay? But in chronic renal failure, the different erythropoietin deficiency will cause anemia. Anemia. Okay. Okay. Both of them, erythropoietin play the main role. Next question. Also, the splenectomy will increase the What increase? Platelets. The bits only, yeah? Thrombocytosis. Thrombocytosis. Yes. Post splenectomy, thrombocytosis. A 60 years old man undergoes cystectomy of a bladder carcinoma. And during surgery, the ureter is identified of which region of the bladder the ureter prize the presses apprise the bladder wall, anterior, apex, lateral, neck, posterior, or base. Posterior or base E. Very common question in the exam. Ureters go to the posterior or the base. Okay, another question is, uh, yani, yani just uh, uh, in mind, another question asking about the base of the bladder, which is um, during PV examination, what is, is felt anteriorly uh, uh, at the anterior vaginal wall? Base what part of the bladder will be? Base of base. The, the same, base of the bladder. Base of the bladder will be the same during uh, per vaginal examination, PV examination, the anterior vaginal wall is attached or adjacent to the base of the bladder, so you can feel the base of the bladder as well. Okay. During during PR examination. So, PV examination, you will have base is of the bladder, okay? 2020 January, yes. Digital rectal examination. Anteriorly is the anterolateral is the Anyone can answer and hear what you can feel in this director examination? In digital uh, PR? Yes. PR, it's, uh, we can uh, be male or female? Male. Prostate. 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 
Anterolateral, male or female? The bob procedure is ligament. Pupoxigia, muscle or pupoxigia, pupoxigia, muscle. Pupoxigia, very common by the way. Or, or pupoxigia, and sometimes I think pupoxigia is muscle. This, uh, yani, I, I'm trying to, rem to remember as many questions as I can. Pioporectalis muscle you can feel during anterolateral and BR examination. Okay. I think we will face this question during the call. Okay, next, next please. A 65 years old man had a colonic resection of the carcinoma 12 hours ago. He is now passing concentrated urine at the rate of 0.5 mil per kilogram per hour, which endocrine responsible is most likely to have caused this decreased aldosterone release, decrease in sodium, decreased thyroid release, increase adrenocortical hormone, and increase vasopressin release, E, increase vasopressin antidiuretic hormone. Increased vasopressin release or antidiuretic hormone. Okay. Next question. A 28 years old man presented with the isorectal abscess. Where is the abscess cavity likely to be sited above the bathroom ani? between external and internal anal sphincter, lateral to obturator internals, medial to the internal anal sphincter, medial to the pudendal canal. It is medial to the pudendal canal. Exactly, this is the pudendal canal, and this is the puberectal labs, the escorectal labs. Next question. Mm -hmm. I think repeated yeah, it's since okay. yesterday. Okay, again. Uh, uh, 36 years old man, um, full on outstretching right hand. Next examination revealed tenderness in the anatomical snap books, which one of the following tendon from the boundary of the anatomical snap books? Okay, external pollicis longus. Exactly. We said anterior or lateral is the extensor pollicis. Previous. Sensor polishes previous and longus, sensor polishes longus. previous and uh, abductor no. longus is forming the anterior or the lateral anterior or the lateral boundary in the anatomical position. The posterior or medial boundary is made by extensor polishes longus. Next question. Okay. What is the question? Uh, 70, 70 question. Okay, 55 years old man, complain of the cramp and tingling in her leg and arm, um, 24 hour follow a total subtotal thyroidectomy. Her vital signs are stable. Investigation reveal normal white cells, color in the normal hemoglobin. The, Na in sodium. Sodium is 132 millimole, potassium 3.2 millimole, and the calcium 1.60 millimole. And the so serum albumin normal. The next appropriate step to intravenous infusion is calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate, potassium chloride, sodium chloride, and sodium sodium chloride. This is, we can give calcium chloride. Calcium The patient has hypocalcemia, post-operative, so you can give calcium chloride. Okay. Okay. 
if you found calcium gluconate will be of also the most more accurate calcium gluconate but here he can tell you if you look here he can tell you calcium chloride and calcium gluconate will be the best and patient has hypocalcemia post-operative next question 40 years old. Auto repeated no okay 40 years old women presented with the fecal incontinence and anatomical intact internally and external anal sphincter. Which structure most likely to be damaged? Good end on there. Okay. Uh, who's ready to continue to take over, Dr. Doffer? I need more, more participants, please. I need new participants, Dr. Matas. I'm ready. Who's else? Uh, okay, I need, need more, please, to participate. Okay, Dr. Matasson, go. I want to save time. Go. Okay, uh, abdominal free fluid will collect in the lowest part of the peritoneal cavity at operation with the, the patient to supine. In which of the following will the fluid collect first? Hepatorenal pouch, left suprarenal space, lesser sac, right paracolic gutter, right subphrenic space. Um, at operation with the patient uh, supine, Initial zone. Um, I think it will collect in. Um, Hepaturinal. Hepaturinal pouch. Morrison pouch or hepaturinal pouch is the most common place. It's the most common place that will be collected during a supine position. If the patient in the fowlers or semi sitting position, the most common place will be uh, in pelvic, pelvic, pelvic. Very common, very common, by the way, very common, by the way, during putting the drain post-operative for any cause, putting the drain. If you put the brain in the, in the, the drain in the pelvis, you have to sit the patient in a power or semi sitting position. So any collected fluid go direct through the paracolic gutters to the to the pelvis to be uh, drained by the drain. If the patient can't be by any cause and the patient has to be supine, make sure that you can put two drains, one in the pelvis and one in the Morrison pouch or hepaturina pouch. So any collected fluid could be, this is the most common places for fluid collection to be drained. As you see in the picture, this is the hepaturina and this is the pelvic or ectovasical pouch. Next question. A 45 year old homeless man presents with a cough and weight loss over three months. On examination, his body mass index is 19 and he has reduced breast sounds in the right upper zone. His chest X-ray shows a cavitating lesion in the right upper lobe. He undergoes a bronchoscopy and a bronchial uh, biopsy. The biopsy shows featureless feature. Uh, biopsy shows featureless necrosis uh, surrounded by epithelioid macrophages and the giant cells. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Ctinomycosis, bronchitis, sarcoidosis, squamous cell carcinoma, tuberculosis. And necrosis, if you say it is granuloma, it's a picture of granuloma. It will be, and the patient has weight loss. Tuberculosis, but no, 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 tuberculosis. Caseating granuloma, caseating granuloma in the chest. With cavitation. Okay, cavitating lesion in the lung and the upper pool, you have two things most commonly this and this. Okay. Okay. This is the most cavitating lesion in, 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 in patient 
if you can find squamous cell carcinoma, very common to be represented by a cavitating lesion and tuberculosis capillary. And both of them can get in the upper pool of the lung, of the upper loop of the upper loop of the lung. And then he continued to tell you, look to the age of the patient. Look to uh, the age of the 45. patient. 45. Okay. And the both of them, patient have a cough, weight loss, and maybe hematemesis and so on, chest X-ray, cavitating lesion. But then go to the biopsy, bronchoscopy and bronchial biopsy. Okay. Bronchial okay. biopsy. You'll find featureless necrosis caseation surrounded by epsiloid macrophage and just this is a picture of tuberculous granuloma. Uh, granuloma caseation epsiloid macrophage and giant cells okay what is the name of the giant cells the name of giant cells uh -huh. in the, in the, uh, the name of giant cells in the uh, <laughs> And this TV. Brohams, Langerhans. Langerhans, the Shabab, Langerhans giant cell. Langerhans giant cell in the TV. Okay. Okay, next question. Uh, next question. Uh, a healthy 36 years old man is being assessed with a view to being a life-related life kidney donor, uh, which are of following investigations is most accurate for measuring the GFR, creatinine clearance, glucose clearance, inulin clearance, paramino hypuric acid, uh, urea clearance, GFR in urine clearance. Glomerular penetration rate, urine clearance. clearance. Okay. okay. Uh, and for amino um, hypuric acid? Yeah. Plasma. Uh, for uh, uh, for plasma, plasma clearance. This uh, inulin, uh, uh, there's a two times question I saw about inulin when he asked about investigation in the clinic. In vivo and vetro. Yeah. You mean this? About uh, in uh, in the clinic, يعني, in clinic side, when you are in a clinic and you want to assess the GF GFR, and in the options there is serum creatinine, they choose the serum yes. creatinine. Glomerular filtration rate. Okay. In vivo. Serum creatinine. Okay. Yes. In vitro, the synthetic, the synthetic or exogenous, exogenous alternative for serum creatinine is the inulin. Okay. Tamam. Okay. I have a photo. I have a photo. Tell you in vivo and vet. In vivo. You choose this in vitro and the experimental or exogenous, the exogenous alternative for serum creatine is inulin. Okay. In renal plasma flow is for amino hyperic acid. خلاص تمام كان كان سامون ريد ذيس بيكتشر بليز ام انولين اند بارا امينو هيبيوريك اسيد انولين از فريلي فلترد ات ذا جلوميرولس اند از نايزر ري ابزوربد نور سيكريتد ذيرفور فيري امبورتنت ان كويستشن واي واي يو تشوز انولين ات از كومبليتلي فريلي فلتر ثرو ذا جلوميريس not reabsorb it and not secrete it. So it gives you an accurate, an accurate measure about the glomerular filtration rate. Okay. 
uh, substances which are filtered and reabsorbed will have lower clearance than inulin. Uh, substances that are filtered and secreted will have greater clearance than inulin. Uh, okay, para amino okay. mm -hmm. acid is freely filtered at the glomerulus, and the most of the remaining para amino acid is actively secreted into the tubule, so that more than ninety percent of plasma is cleared of its para amino acid in one pass through the kidney. Paramino hyperic acid can be used to measure the plasma flow through the kidneys, equals renal plasma flow. Okay, so don't forget this. Inulin is a uh, uh, glomerular filtration rate. Paramino hyperic acid is the renal plasma flow. Next question. Mm. A 34-year-old pregnant woman develops a swollen leg. Her mother and the maternal aunt also had during illnesses. The uh, uh, antiphospholipid antibodies. Repeat the question. Uh, antiphospholipid or anti-cardiolipid syndrome. Rome and Dr. Ahmad Aid, this is not a normal edema of pregnancy, okay? Next question. A 72-year-old alcoholic man is known to suffer from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. He has now been diagnosed with carcinoma of the urinary bladder and has a history of gastric ulcer. Which of the following agents is most likely to be responsible for all these problems? Alcohol, cigarette smoking, drugs, dust, virus. Uh, I think it's cigarette smoking, which causes COPD and the uh, cancer is stomach. Exactly. The, the, only, uh, the, only, uh, the on yes, the only thing can be uh, uh, sharing both of them is the COPD and cancer urinary bladder is uh, smoking. Okay, next question. A three-year-old boy is admitted to hospital with severe vomiting. Radiographic examination and the history reveals that he is suffering from annular pancreas. Which of these structures is constricted? Second part of didenum. Also, it is a repeated question. Repeated question. Next question. A forty-five-year-old man presents with a three centimeter by four centimeter swelling in the right groin, which is non-tender. A cuff impulse is elected at operation, and indirect inguinal hernia is found. The external inguinal ring is a defect in which of the following abdominal, abdominal wall? It is a defect in the external oblique of neurosis. Um, okay, and the internal ring? Fascia transversalis. Fascia transversalis, exactly. Next, Next question. question. A 45 year old woman suffers from spina bifida and is confined to a wheelchair. Her legs are not fully developed. What is the pathological process which has occurred in the legs? Uh, apoptosis, atrophy, hyperplasia, hypertrophy, hypoplasia. Atrophy, disuse atrophy. Disuse atrophy. Sorry, no, 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 no. no I'm sorry. It's a, I, I didn't have to spell in the spina bifida. So the spina bifida and the okay. wheelchair. Her legs are not fully developed. Uh, so it is hypoplasia. Not fairly developed. Is that, is that no, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. It's hypoplasia. It's hypoplasia. Hypoplasia. Okay, next question. Uh, a 23 year old man presents to the emergency department with non specific chest pain. A posterior anterior chest radiograph is performed and is normal. Immediately inferior. Uh, immediately inferior uh, caudal <clears throat> to the outline of the aortic knuckle was a further structure with convex border. What is this structure? The left atrium, the pulmonary trunk, the esophagus, the right atrium, the superior vena cava. The, the pulmonary trunk? Okay. Yeah. Non infection, some strong anterior years before the immediately inferior. 
Who's the outline of the word technophil? Who's the code? The immediately structure? inferior to the coder to the outline of the thoracic knuckle. I think it is. Where is the word? Where is the word technophil? Where is the word technophil? This is our technical. Where's the structure convex border? Just inferior to the our technical will be pulmonary trunk. Completely right, the pulmonary trunk. Perfect. Okay, who's next for the last 10 questions? We have. Um, Almost about 180 questions for sheet, Fawzia, uh, sheet two, Fawzia. Uh, number two, we have about 180 questions. I think we can finish 90 today and can finish 90 tomorrow. Okay? Thanks. Because I have work, I have work after a couple of hours. Okay. Okay. Last question and then uh, thank you for today and meet again tomorrow. Almost will be the same time at six o'clock. Okay? Okay. okay. Okay, last thing, question, who's ready? We are ready. You always ready, Dr. Duffer, okay. Go, Dr. Duffer, <laughs> for the last thing, question. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, 45 years old woman presented with a hospital with a jaundice. She's undergo an ultrasound scan, diagnosis with hepatocellular carcinoma, affect the left loop of the of her liver. Which virus is the, the most likely implicated? Epstein Barr virus, hepatitis B virus, HIV virus, human papilloma virus, and the human T cells trophic virus. So it is B, hepatitis B virus. Hepatitis B virus. It is with hepatocellular carcinoma more than hepatitis C as well. Next question. Uh, uh, 82 years old, man has complete occlusion of his inferior mesenteric artery on the angiograph he had he but no symptom or sign chronic ischemia which of the following artery is the most li likely additional source of the blood supply to the tutority of the inferior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery left colic artery left gastroepiploic middle colic tiplinic and the superior rectum middle colic very common question yeah. That's by 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 different ways. Sometimes what give additional. Sometimes after left uh, colectomy, or sometimes after sigmoidectomy. Sometimes, yani, uh, after uh, uh, transverse or anastomosis after complete left colectomy. Ask you what will give you additional additional blood supply to the left colon or to the stump or to the uh, sometimes of the colostomy. It will be the middle colic. It anastomos with the uh, left colic, which is a branch of the inferior mesenteric, to give a good anastomosis and additional blood supply to the left side of the colon. Next question. Uh, 65, uh, 40, uh, 56 years old man, documented type 1 diabetes mellitus, presented to the surgical outpatient clinic with the three month history of right leg pain. Approach on by walking 15 meter. meter. He has no history of the back pain. He has been smoking uh, for 10 years, 10 cigarettes a day. He settled his alcohol consumption to be 30 units per week. On a clinical examination, significant findings include weak right uh, foot pulse, mood alteration sensation of the dorsum of the right foot. What is the most likely diagnosis D from the following list? Autonomical neuropathy, femoropopletial stenosis, neuropathic joint disease, poly, uh, polyneuropathy, uropathy, pediculopathy. It is uh, femoropopletial stenosis. Exactly. Very common question in the exam. He will want you to differentiate between Neurological and vascular colloidopathy. Okay, colloidication, colloidication, um, 
maybe vascular, maybe uh, lower limb cladopathy, maybe uh, vascular, maybe neurogenic. You have to differentiate between the two. There is low back pain here and low back pain. And actually, there is three, three, three things you have to differentiate and very common question in part B. How differentiate? between vascular, neurogenic, and in neurogenic, and disc and spinal stenosis. All these can cause lower limb complications, and you have to differentiate. In, in vascular, the patient has no back pain. The patient has no back pain, but have a problem, general or local problem that can cause vasculopathy. In neurogenic patient, the patient most of patients may also have back pain. Most of them have back pain. But in patient with, okay, let's explain it. Vascular, vascular, neurogenic, neurogenic, lower limb. I'm thinking about lower limb claudication. Okay, lower limb claudication. Vascular, neurogenic. Neurogenic may be disc prolapse okay or it may be spinal stenosis vascular the patient has no back pain no back no back pain okay just he have a general or local problem for vasculopathy neurogenic Disc prolapse, most of them has the patient has back pain. Okay, but in spinal stenosis, patient pain relieved and the collocation relieved by flexion of the flexion of the spine. Any patient when the patient bend forward during pushing um, uh, 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 pushing like uh, uh, pushing something like uh, uh, water uh, that, um, chair wheel or pushing a car for shopping car kit for shopping or the patient is going uphill going uphill pain decrease so this is a spinal stenosis the patient is going uphill he is bending forward the patient like this when the patient bending forward, he opens the spinal canal stenosis, so pain is decreased. Hyperextension, the pain increases. This is in the spinal canal stenosis, but disc prolapse, no. Disc prolapse, no. But ever the disc prolapse, it may be going downhill, going downhill, be due to extension of the spine the pain is relieved. Extending the spine, the pain is relieved. When the patient of disco prolapse try to bend or flex the spine, the pain increase. That's why they say going uphill, patient with spinal stenosis will have decreased the pain. Going downhill or going down, downward or going down the stairs, the patient with disc uh, prolapse will have less pain. That's why the patient of disco prolapse, we make the leg raising test. Leg raising test makes like flexion of the spine. So the pain is more increased in disco prolapse by leg raising test. Leg raising test make flexion of the spine. So that will make a pain. Anyone understand anything? Yeah. Clear? For me, yes, or you got lost. For me. You, all, you almost okay. now yeah, you almost now discussed around uh, six or seven uh, famous questions in the MR space. Yes, I, I hope yeah, no one yeah. is lost. Yeah, yeah. No, no, very common okay. question. And okay, thank yeah. you. Next it's very question. nice way to uh, to make uh, like uh, summing up everything uh, together, so we can differentiate. Yeah. Uh, okay. A 35 years old man presented with a three week history of lower back pain and a three days history of the pain and weakness in his left leg. Physical examination demonstration numbness over the posterior aspect of the left calf extended to the lateral aspect of the two, uh, foot, left ankle, 
ankle reflex is absent magnetic resonance image show compression of the layer on the s1 nerve root what is the most likely cause of compression of this nerve nulus fibrosis anterior ligamental nucleus pulposus yes posterior ligamental and vertebral it's and, yesterday question so yeah. okay let's ask about this compression of s1 what will be the result of this or the clinical picture of this patient yesterday we weak, said this weak plantar flexion s1 will produce weak plantar flexion plantar flexion and lateral side of the foot or lateral. also lateral side of the foot. sensory lateral side of the foot perfect okay because it's a repeat question of yesterday, so you can remember. Okay, next question. 72 years old man who is walking presented with the, to the doctor with the second episode of Frank hematuria. When ultrasound, uh, ultrasound scan, his urinary tract was performed. It is a solid lesion on the, in the right kidney. Most likely pathology under this presentation Amino, myelin lipoma, renal cell carcinoma, renal cyst, renal oncocytoma, transitional cell carcinoma. It is A. A? And then just a minute. Frank Hematuria, smoker, 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 Frank Sweet. Hematuria and the solid mass in the right kidney. What is the most common cause of- Renal cell carcinoma. Renal cell carcinoma. Most common cause of frank hematuria. Frank hematuria in a smoker and solid mass. The most common mass will happen in this age group, renal cell carcinoma. Okay, next question. A 20 years old man presented with abdominal pain and shock. He is found to have hemoperitoneum due to rupture of the spleen. He is denied any history of the trauma. What is the most likely predisposing causing of the splenic rupture? Hemisthenia pair virus, HIV virus, measles, mumps, varicella zoster. So it is hemisthenia pair virus. Okay, the most common cause of rupture spleen in a young patient, spontaneous rupture spleen in a young patient is a patient bar. What is the, uh, the syndrome or the or the picture or the disease can cause by the patient bar virus? Infectious mononucleosis. Infectious mononucleosis. Infectious or glandular fever or infectious mononucleosis is the most common for uh, spontaneous splenic rupture in young age. Spontaneous splenic rupture in young age. Okay, you can read this. Predisposing fact, infectious mononucleosis, malaria, typhoid, and this was infectious by Christian bar virus, most common cause of a spontaneous splenic rupture in young age. Next question. A 30 years old woman presented with the outpatient clinic with the three month history of diarrhea, which is intermittent, bloody. On a rectal exam, an rectal biopsy history, histology has shown granulomatous inflammation. What is the most likely diagnosis? MPSs, Crohn's, sarcoidosis, TB, and ulcerative colitis. 30 years, okay. Show granulomatous inflammation, so this T. Crohn's disease. Sorry, 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 sorry. A granulomatous inflammation. Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease. This A is, a, yani it makes a big difference. Okay. Ah, granulomatous disease. Uh, uh, what is the definition of definition of uh, uh, Crohn's disease? 
Pass definition of front disease. It is a non-granulomatous inflammation. Non-granulomatous inflammation. Okay. Very important. Very important. Very important. In part B, in the station of inflammatory bowel disease, and he want to ask you describe the Crohn disease. The first thing, non-caseating. Inflammation presence of granuloma. Uh, Non-caseating granuloma disease. Sorry. Non-caseating granuloma inflammation. Sorry, I, I started on a bad officer. Okay. So this is a picture of Crohn's disease. Non-caseating granulomatous inflammation. Non-caseating granulomatous inflammation. Next question. Uh, 56 years old. Uh, what uh, was sorry, presented? sorry, Dr. Rami, because I, am, uh, I became confused. And, and the last question. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is it non, is a it is a granulomatous okay non okay one of the non caseating granulomas is the Crohn's disease non and he's forming non caseating granuloma non caseating okay. granuloma sorry i i just get uh, <laughs> okay 56 years old motorcycle presented to the emergency department after being involved in the road traffic accident. He's smoking and known to have hypertensive. He is conscious, glasgow scale 13, and maintains his uh, own airway and breathing. He is found to have open right femoral fracture with normal distal pulse and sensation resuscitation a start. Usual catheterization drain 250 ml immediately, but over the following 60 minutes, he drained only 10 ml. Which is which of the following is the most likely cause of low urine output? A block catheter, cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, rupture, uh, bladder, and the septic shock. If from that, it's it is either block or the hypovolemic. So we should be said differentiate between these two. So catheterization, it is blocked catheter. But then there should be zero uh, ml of urine output. He is still draining 10 ml. Oh. The most common cause of uh, castor anuria is blocked the castor. Anuria with a castor or or uh, or or no urine for castor is blocked the castor. The most common this patient started 250, and then after six minutes they drowned only 10 ml, and here is resuscitation is started. Resuscitation is started, and then this is most be hypovolemic shock. The patient has fracture of femur or fracture, fracture femur, open fracture femur, it drains about one and a half liter to two liters. <laughs> this is, distal pulse is still working, sensation is still good, but the patient still has started to have 250 ml. Then after one hour, after one hour, the patient starts to drain 10 ml. And there is no abdominal trauma, by the way. So why, why you think about block the castor? More traffic accidents, so yeah. there's hypertension. No, no, it's hypervolumic. Hypervolumic, so hypervolumic, yeah. More hype. A confusing question, by the way, and sometimes maybe both can be considered right, but he was the most likely here, the most okay. likely. If he told me it started to be and then it started to be zero, zero, it will be blocked the castor. Uh, 35 Next years question. Old, 35 years old, man. Is admitted to the with pancreatitis, which leads to admission to the surgical high dependency C unit. After 48 hours, he developed breath difficult with elevation respiratory rate and increased hypoxia. He is suspect to have developed respiratory failure. 
which of the following mechanism is responsible for regulation of respiration? And brain stem receptor produce voluntary breathing, CO2 concentration in the medulla, elevation in the bicarbonate level in the in the cerebrospinal fluid, hydrogen ion uh, cross the blood brain barrier, hypoxia stimulated of the chemoreceptor. So it is hypoxia, you said. Hypoxia-stimulated chemoreceptor. What do you think? A. A? E, you say? Yes, E. Hypoxia-stimulated of the chemoreceptor. Okay. When we said in the, in the, uh, the chemoreceptor in the brain, we said sensitive to what? CO2. CO2 and pH. Yes. So here, decreased ventilation, plasma CO2 will go for this CSF chemoreceptor in the medulla oblongata, and respiratory center in the medulla oblongata, and then go to the spinal cord, and then go to the respiratory muscle to increase the respiration. So what is the effect? CO2. So affect okay. the chemoreceptor, not the hypoxia. Okay. Not the hypoxia. B. Okay. Okay. Clear. It's clean. Chemoreceptor, central, central chemoreceptors. Central chemoreceptors is sensitive to CO2 and pH. No oxygen sensitive. Next question and last question. Okay. A 70 years old man undergo transurethral resection of the bladder tumor. The uh, tumor lie out the lateral side wall of the bladder just above the opening of the urethric orifice. Use of diamethermy suddenly caused the patient to kick because of concentration of the hip, construction of the hip abducted, abducted muscles. Which nerve stimulate obturator nerve? Very common question in the exam, by the way. Sometimes tell you the bladder, sometimes tell you drawing vaginal delivery, sometimes tell you uh, what else? And any pelvic, any pelvic surgery and the patient kicks because contraction of the abductor muscle, that means that this will be, uh, uh, you can see here in the picture, the obturator nerve in the pelvic organ. So it will supply all the adductor muscles for the patient. The obturator nerve will be affected. Okay. Finished 90 question today. Thank you. We still have almost 90 or less than 90 question. We can start it tomorrow at six o'clock as well. Thank you for you all. Thank you for those who participate today. I hope we much, could Dr. help Thank you. you sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rami. I hope, Thank I you, hope Dr. we Rami. could help you today in understanding some uh, important issue on the question. Fazia sheet again and again is very, very important. No exam without 30, 40, 50, up to 60 questions from Fazia sheet. Okay? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Rami. Thank you. Nice, and nice for... discussion and demonstrations. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you for all. Thank, Thank you for all, especially Dr. Rami and Dr. Zaki. Thank you, Dr. Zakir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a nice uh, night shift, Dr. Rami. <laughs> ah, night shift. Ah, I'm going for <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good